All right. pick. One pick. That's it. That's a, that's all that needs to be recapped. Also, hello, everybody. Um, so, uh, <laughs> we're here for Eternal today. We're here for drafting Eternal today. And we have the first pick of the Eternal draft done uh, in the Phantom Zone. And we also have a friend of the show with. Hi. How you doing? I'm MDCT. Call me Doc if you want. All right. Formerly known as Mighty Dictron, if you remember that stuff, but it was kind of a bad name, so I changed it. You know, that's 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 reasonable. That's 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 quite fair, Doc. All right. Yeah. So, um, the the first pick to 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 quick recap where we are. Uh, I picked a Minotaur Light Hoof, which is the four four that makes another unit unblockable over a stranger that gives your strangers warp. Because I'm not actually impressed by that one. <laughs> But now we're in a, a, a position where I either can pick a, a pretty good card to keep on uh, Shadow with Longshot Marksman, or a couple pretty strong time picks in this pack as well. Uh, Archive Curator is a card I love, and Sand Viper does a lot of work. Archive Curator is fantastic, and the Gun Uncle is a very solid two drop. Yes. Uh, being able to effectively attack into outside of like bold adventure any other two as well as work a lot better with tricks like uh i don't know say the pummel right below it uh making that a you know a very good blowout is a pretty good place to be pretty relevant in the late game too as uh if it comes down it can be in eight mana four three with quick draw which is not incredible but you know it's giving you options and that's always a good thing Right. I, I'm a big fan of the, the cycle of cards, that, that, that entire cycle, the Marksman, uh, the Sand Viper right next to it is part of that cycle. Um, each of them operates pretty well on their, their like front side and then get better later, which is really nice. Yeah, the, the two that are in this pack right now are my favorite, and probably my least favorite is the Fire one, the Overwhelm one. But yeah. it's still fine, you know? I'd still play it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this is this is just a lot more of a compelling of a. Okay, I'm I'm noticing something here, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna point this out because I'm I'm noticing it, and it it, uh, I hope it's coming through on the on the foily green effect. Can you see what looks like a TV tracking line going down on them? That's really no, I'm not. I'm not really seeing that on... Like, like just the green foily effect on the three uncommons, it looks like an old TV from, like, the 70s doing, like, tracking and, have, they're like, you know, have, having, like, this line going down. If, if that... If that... Anyway, let's... There's definitely wiggles going on in that, uh, in the green aura, but I, I wouldn't call it a TV tracking signal, if you ask me, but... Well, it, it, it's... Yeah, that, that was just the first thing to compare to. Anyway, um, uh, really, I'm stuck here on Archive Curator versus Longshot Marksman because Curator is such a good card. Yep. Like, common version of the Justice Rare, still incredibly good. And a lot more so in, in Limited. You know, you, you see the, the Justice Rare all over the place in Constructed. Uh, and Archive Curator still sees play constructed as well. Um, Including it, in the world's most hated deck. Yep. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and trust in the Curator. Yeah, in fact, it's played in that deck over uh, Valkyrie Enforcer. Yep. Because it's got one power. Because it has like one power. God damn it, I hate <sighs> challenge so much. <laughs> It's the only deck in this game that I actively dislike. Every other deck I'm totally fine with. I don't give a shit about Sandstorm Titan. <laughs> but Chalice, I despise. <sighs> uh, nice, opening up a mating call. Yeah, I was going to say, so what bad card are we picking here? Am I just going to pick a stranger for stranger's sake? Like, I don't like anything else in this. Uh, of all of these cards, I think the most playable is Journeyman Armor. But, I mean, that's putting us into th third color to start with. And it's good, but it's not, like, compelling. Yeah. Um, mentor and student, uh, I'll, when I find another card, I'll, I'll 
show you, but you, you, when you have a card with, with, with this one here with mating call, uh, is kind of an odd duck. Cause usually when you see mentor and student, it's on a card or like on a, a, a creature, but you exhaust a unit you control to apply some effect to the student. Um, mating call just, is basically unplayable at every speed. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's not even a deck in constructed that plays this. Not even um, the awaken the, the ancients one, which fills your entire deck up with tons of the same creature, doesn't play this still. Uh, I disagree heavily. I think Praxis is incredibly good in draft. Really? Yep. I think it for me. It's my of the of the five combos from from omens of the past i think it's like you know it's it's you know one through four is is up there and then there's a gigantic gap and then there's praxis which is nigh unplayable i mean i most of my uh seven wins perhaps at post uh, omens have actually been in praxis usually splashing another color but like splashing hmm. another color with like a couple of a, a pe couple pieces and that was it right like the most success I've had with it is like splashing the red or the the time in a in a, a deck that can do it. Usually, some usually it's in uh, primal is the third. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I'm still just thinking that dang stranger is like a oh, God. It's off, completely off though. Like that's not even like a one color stranger. So like it it, it only is useful if I'm as a 2-2 body, which I think is something we'll end up with enough of over time. I'll pick the Journeyman Armor as a a nod to it just being the best card in this pack. Like I yeah. I, I have a I have a distaste for 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 Praxis as a as a uh, archetype in, in limited, but Journeyman Armor is by no means a bad card. Oh. It's actually an incredible card. <laughs> okay, for what it's worth, when I say Praxis, I don't mean warp. I don't mean like the warp cards overall. I just mean like good, good cards and fire and time. Yeah. For what it's worth. Yeah, I, I get you. I get you. My my, my problem is that uh, they have an they have this lack of evasion, which is just killer. You, you like you have to overpower them with cards, and you can like cannon bearer is a pretty good card at overpowering your opponent. And mm -hmm. just being a large like cannon bearer is a card that I I like a lot for how like its body is is just this gigantic roadblock that generally gets to keep attacking, and its summon effect is more often relevant than you might think. Yes, there's a lot of one toughness things in this game, and you will usually hit well not usually but you will often hit something with cannon bearer and it matter. Yep. Uh, I mean, right up there, we see a, a card that dies to everything, and, and Cannon Bearer can just shoot the Serpent Mount out. Um, I guess it's it's. I guess I, I've talked enough about the Cannon Bearer. That's that's the I think the card that is most playable in here. And then there's just some banners. Yeah, both uh good banners. Xenon Banner is probably the one you want more. Uh, going off of what you've said about Praxis. Yeah. Like so, well, also more so, like like Minotaur Light Hoof is is double for its mm -hmm. costing. I'm just intrigued if if maybe the if it, if maybe the the time can be the splash here and then get into some sort of aggressive style uh, or like not even aggressive. It looks like if we played Stone Scar, it'd be a slower. Well, you're only three picks in. Yeah. Anyway, I think with that, I'm I'm fine picking up some some fixing and and allowing myself uh, better choices in the future. Yeah, fair enough. That's it's smart. Picking right. fixing is smart. Hmm. I don't pick fixing highly enough. That's why I lose to not having my colors more than anything else. Yeah, I end up. I've I've come to the point where like on color strangers are the like very high picks. Um, That's fair. Because two drops are just as important as, like, fixing, and they will always be playable, and they'll get you further. Hmm. I could pick up Umbrin Thurster. I could pick up, if I if I think that that's possible, and I could pick up Vara's Choice, which is... I'm not certain it's, it's a, like... It's fine. A lot of the times it's going to be, like, Silence Bounce. 
Yeah. That's going to be its main mode, especially like unless I act actively know that my opponent has some sort of effect in... Or, like, you know, thing that is in their hand, especially a little more so in, in draft. I'm not the biggest fan of discard effects in draft, is, I guess, the thing. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Uh, Vara's choice. You know, as silence bounds is okay. Yeah. And I I have had poor luck getting Life Force to work in draft. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Umbrin Thurster. That's, that's a good place to, to try out. All right. Like, Umbrin Thurster only needs one activation to be, you know, on, and then everything else is just gas from there. And it comes late yeah. enough that any enabler turns it on. This one's not really anything going on for me in here. Yeah. <laughs> We've got uh, Viper's Bite and Audacious Bandit as the the cards that are closest to what we can do. Uh, Viper's Bite is expensive, but gets a job done. I've never been incredibly happy casting the card. <coughs> but Viper's Bite? Sorry, I uh, I had to refresh the, the stream. Yeah, Viper's Bite is uh, probably... The... It works. Yeah. Go. It's, it, it's expensive, but it works, I guess. Oh dear, Stone Scar Excavator. This is, yeah, four to p discard a power. Nice. The Inevitability Machine. Excavator. That can't be real. It's not. It's not real. Any card in this game which has a bunch of dynamite just strapped onto a thing is not real, but it is fun. <laughs> True. This is just like, well, how are we going to excavate this, like, ancient artifact? Uh, blow, blow it up? Yeah. I mean, it works. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with some more fixing. The Xenon Banner seems seems like a good way to be able to play, uh, play cards. Uh, yeah. oh, Practice Stranger. Sweet. On, like, very real Stranger. Good place to be. Uh, also notably our first two drop yes which I, I like to have a good amount of to, to make function and I guess here we get to pick Swear Vengeance um, I don't know I've never been terribly excited about Swear Vengeance it's like a sideways version of Dark Return that's slightly worse a lot of the time right because it's like you cast your Dark Return and then you know something like six turns later you get a payoff well, when you cast it, it's going to be six, turn la six turns later. When your opponent casts it, it's next turn. <laughs> six is, you know, five and six is like the, the, the ran, you know, that's, that's the average, you know? One, but it just 5.5 this... should be the average, right? Mm-hmm. Should be. I don't like Sandglass Sentinel. Wow, okay. Journeyman Armor, this, uh, at this point is a nice... Uh, thing and Amber Ring is uh, actually all three of these cards are actually quite fine. Um, Amber Ring is probably unless you have an incredibly deep life for life forest plan. I want to say Amber Ring's maybe the best ring in in draft. Yeah, it's just this button that says like, okay, when when we get to a late game, uh, I have inevitability and you can't win on the ground. Like at right. all. Like you can't if you're planning on winning through a Terrazon. Go away. That's not happening. Um, the green one is also very good in draft. I'll agree with that. But Not sure Bludgeoner is fine. I like Bludgeoner more. Uh, having played a couple rounds with an Argentport deck that was just heavy weapons. Uh, like, you know, you, you play Bludgeoner and then give it an Elder's Feather and have a 5-5 five five Flyer. Or you, you play Bludgeoner and just give it a gun. And it's a 6-6 six, six, uh, quick draw. Yeah. Bludgeoner works very well if you have the weapons to support it. Oddly enough, works very well with Journeyman Armor. <laughs> yep. Sure does. Uh, one of my... So a big thing about why... It, getting, like, four Journeyman Armors in a, in a draft really helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Because it's just eternal, you know, unit buff. 
And also, you know, it being cheap and having warp sometimes matters. I I kind of want to pick up the armor and have fire be an option, like this this side splash. We already we have a Praxis Stranger, and I can pick up maybe a bit of Stone Scar fixing or Stone Star Scar cards in the upcoming pack to make that a little work a little more. Yeah, armor again is is like the most impressive card that Praxis has as, as far as like how like, like anything up to before rares, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, Zenon Augury, that's fine. That's a good, uh, like, maybe we play it, maybe we don't. Oh, um, hmm. Infernal Tyrant. Hold on. Infernal Tyrant? Infernal Tyrant. Infernal Tyrant rules. Yeah. Let me hmm. tell you about Infernal Tyrant. And causing it to murder your entire board over and over again so you oh, can yeah. get more of the same board and then just mill 55 cards out of your deck and then kill your opponent. Purify would we like to speak with you. Fair. Purify is, is, is the stronger card compared to armor. But yeah. It's true. Um, Sauropod's in here too. I think that's the, the, the choice we're picking between. Uh, is, is Infernal Tyrant and Sauropod. Infernal Tyrant fits in the... Uh, the life force plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a, this is actually kind of a hard pick because Infernal Tyrant is actually a pretty good rare as also just being a six mana six six with lifesteal. Mm -hmm. But Sauropod is an incredibly strong draft card. Right. Like you play Sauropod, it's usually two for one or one for one with strong minions and you just get two of them. You know? Yeah. Like Twinbird Sauropod, really good card actually. Infernal Tyrant, very fun and pretty good card. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely a direction pick. If I pick up Infernal Tyrant, I'm aiming for Stone Scar splashing for Archive Curator and Journeyman Armors. If I pick Twin Bird Sarpod, I'm aiming for uh, Xenon splashing for armor. Yeah, which may, might eventually mean you cut the armors if you have to. But uh, you probably won't, but... Oh man, I, I actually don't know. I like both of these choices. Uh, if you ask, I if I was put in this situation and I didn't already have a full play side of Infernal Tyrant, because of course I do. Yeah. Um, I would pick the Infernal Tyrant, but yeah, <laughs> I, I love it. Infernal Tyrant, that that card rules. Yeah. <laughs> Swear vengeance on Twin Bird Star Part. I've look. I've pl I've been playing Infamacto Echo. Mama Crisis on Infinite Mactos. Yeah, we've been calling it Mamacto. That's a that's a fine name for it. So yeah, well, I think they're both like. Here's the trick. I think Twin Bird Star Part can also just be a fun uh, a fun card, as we mentioned. With this, it makes me want to include Swear Vengeance more in the deck if I had something like that. Yeah. Okay, here's a better question. Uh, what does my shadow look like? Your shadow currently looks like Minotaur Lighthoof and Umbran Thurster. Maybe Xenonagory and maybe not that Square yeah. Vengeance, depending. Like, currently, our shadow is not incredibly deep. Yeah. It's not quite... Then again, neither is our time. We have Archive Curator. Right, Archive and... Curator is the only... Like, the only strong card I feel like... The two strong cards we have here are the Archive Curator and the, the Minotaur Light Hoof. Yeah, um, which means probably the better choice of the Sauropod, because the Infernal Tyrant is hard to cast. It's it's got the double fire in it. But then again, you're you're gonna be planning on picking it up more you know, picking up more fire the moment you pick it. Hmm. Right. You know, our uh, our dust and gold values are almost exactly flipped. <laughs> I've, like, I've, I've been spending gold uh, a decent amount, at, like, in events and stuff. And yeah, just been... Tyrant. Ooh, Argentport Instigator and the Tyrant? Yeah, that's that's not a combo at all. That's the that's opposite. Of combo. A, sweet, I kill my board and then everything. Mm. Yeah, I get zero life because my entire board killed me. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking the instigator here. There's nothing else that compares yeah. even remotely. It's not a to combo, it. but instigator is a two mana three three with relevant text. Right. That's completely fine. Ooh. As far as 
uh, okay, we have, we have a couple cards of, of interest here. I actually still like Amber Monument with, uh, with time being this off color. I, yeah, just because the strongest monument, oh, well, strongest in constructed, I think, uh, Cobalt Monument's probably stronger in draft. I was, I was gonna say Cobalt Monument is my pick in draft by a mile. Yeah. Uh, in, in constructed 100%, Amber Monument is the most played, most used. Because, I play constructed uh, way more than draft, so I, I tend to think in constructed terms for this game. Yeah, I'm like unlike Hearthstone, where like I'm basically a hundred percent playing the arena. I do play a, a good amount of constructed in this game, so it's 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 just like shifting uh, back and forth there. I think Amber That's Monument is fine, mostly because we don't have. I could pick up Combust, but I don't like any of the fought. Like we don't have good fodder for it. Yeah, I mean, that Taking Grinadin is decent fodder for it, but we'd be picking Taking Grinadin right now instead of right. Real late. Like, and that man monument is real good. Right. Like, if there wasn't an Argentport instigator in the last pack, it would have been... Uh, 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 there, there, there was a Grenadin drone, which I like a lot. I'm going to pick the monument oh, yeah. here. Grenadin drone is great. Uh, but yeah, as far as the... <laughs> okay, what in the world just happened? Scream, uh, catch up, please. I want to see what we're being offered here. Well, um... I could pick up a really dumb sword. Black knife. I could yeah. pick up an incredibly dumb sword. The the actual <laughs> trick here is that there's m multiple picks that are just better pieces of fixing. Oh yeah, no banner and stranger are both way better than the blood knife. But also, I love you, blood knife. Yeah. Oh how. Blood Knife is actively not a great card in this deck yeah, so far. That's the problem, and and we only have one other pack of uh, of, of Empty Throne, which is where you kind of have the most fodder going on. Again, yeah. that, that, that's where you get uh, your your your, your Dark Wisps, your, dark... your Salt and Bring Stones, your Assembly Line. That's the, the one. Assembly Line, yeah. Your Spiders, if you have, open up Spiders, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just yeah, blood blood knife like doesn't really look very good in the deck we have. So I'm going to 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 move the the question to Stone Scar Banner or Stone Scar Stranger. I would say Stone Scar Stranger. Okay. Personally, I I think that the Stranger will matter a little bit more because I'm looking at our two drops. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the the feeling I have as well right now. I like picking up banners so that we can so that we can have a stronger mana base and have a stronger card base to go with it because we don't have to, like, use spots on these strangers. But also, we we need to be able to make plays on two. Yep. You, for, for, for one, if we take a look at the journeyman armors, having to play an armor into an empty board is the saddest damn thing in the world. You know, like... That warp there is not really there to make it so you can warp things on top of your deck and put it onto something. It's actually just there to make you feel a little bit better about putting down a three, you know, a three mana two two that sideways drew you a card. Mm -hmm. That's the actual reason why warp is on that card. Yep. Ooh, runic revolver. Ooh. I uh, I kind of like that one. Yeah. It's it's good at basically it's good at picking apart like strangers and certain small evasive creatures mm -hmm. um not really enticed by a lot of the other cards in here there's some decent time like dispel ornamental daggers tower top patrol are all like real cards i'd play in a deck yep but uh dark wisp or recogulator if we happened to pick the blood knife would probably have been picked highly yeah if i picked blood knife i think dark wisp would probably be the pick over recogulator personally even though like yeah, I mean, Dark Wisp is it great can't... fodder. The, thi the thing about Recogulator is uh, it's... I feel like it's slightly better to actually do the sacrifice with it because it gives you the two 1-1s one -ones on the board, which helps defend your lit knife, etc. Right. But the... you, I still would agree with you that I would pick the Dark Wisp, too. There's some... There's the, Yeah, there, there's there's talking as well that the, the, the daggers in here... Maybe the the strongest the the daggers are a very strong card. Uh, yep. they're an like I don't know if they're even underrated anymore. I think people have have gotten to the point where they are correctly evaluating the daggers. Where ornamental 
Daggers is just a better version of that sword we just passed a little while ago. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, here we get some good... We're getting some good shadow options here. Lothrai Ranger versus Dire Fang Spider versus Dark Wisp. And I... I like all three. Uh, all three are cards I'm completely happy to include in a, in a deck. Um, I think I'm a little more happy on Lothrai Ranger because it's... Yeah, I I'd agree with that. Lothrai Ranger, I think, is would be my pick. Mm -hmm. It well, like we do have, we don't have a lot of ways to push it through, but we do have, we do have Minotaur Light Hoof, and even if I just played like Armor on on, you know, Lothrai on two, Armor on three, and you know, based on the banners I have or something like that. Uh, speaking mm -hmm. of banners, I can pick up a Stone Scar banner here, or I can pick up a Grenadine Drone. Uh huh. Ground and drones, real good. Yeah. I kind of still like just pick. I'm not. Hmm. More banners. Yeah, that's a more on color banner than anything else. Right. That's the and like. I think I I. I like that. I'm I'm a little sad about not picking up Ground and drone here, but I'm all, I'm not too sad that I won't pick the banner here. Right. Uh, combust, we can hopefully make work. It's easily the pick in here, because nothing else is remotely in our, our setup. Inspire and Frostkin are the, the, the two. Uh, Frostkin's quite good. But we are so far away yep. from picking up any primal that yep. it's not reasonable anymore. Uh, combust is pretty good. If you have to, a bold adventure is okay. But, uh, that's the the splash color yeah. and we're only in pack two and we have four two drops that i like i don't think we're that hard up. yeah yeah the fact that we're only halfway through the draft is really the biggest thing i like about this deck because i already like where it is and we still mm -hmm. have 24 you know picks after this uh i'm just gonna ruin i, I think we're at the oh uh, ticking grunted in versus spirit drain how much removal do i have is spirit drain a card i would actually include you have Runic Revolver for small things, Viper's Bite, which you probably won't be playing anyway, Combust. Spirit Drain's kind of expensive. I think you probably can pass up the Spirit Drain and pick up removal later. But at the yeah. same time, taking credit is not like speaking to me as a card you want to include in your deck. Right. Like if that were if that were Grunted and Drone, this would be a lot more of like a Mm -hmm. This is a, a question. Uh, can always go to the dome if need be. Mm. I'm very nope. sad to report that <laughs> that is that is not the case. That is why Spirit Drain's not a good card. If it could go to the dome, it would be okay, pretty dang good actually. But it can't. It can only hit creature units. I don't. Yeah, the card costs six. I don't know why it says unit. Me neither. Like, what's the we, extract costs three, and that can go dome. Yeah, it costs three to deal three damage. Also, it has Scry attached to it. Yeah, it's so much better than this card. Spirit Drain is a card I hate including in decks and still do sometimes anyway. Well, yeah, because it's still a removal of nothing else. I'm going to ignore it for now. Oh, another Stone Scar banner over a Ticking Grenadine. Yeah, I'm still willing to pick up the banners here and make our... our... Basically, if I can make our... our uh mana base this good like i'll feel a lot better about the the you know splashing for archive curator and journeyman armors at the moment i mean you've got three banners and two on color strangers already pa two packs in that's yeah. pretty dang good all right we have one minotaur at the moment uh i see a card that you're picking in here and then a bunch of other cards Yeah, that's right, baby. That's Shadowlands Bone Picker. <laughs> Shadowlands Bone Picker is quite real. Shadowlands Bone Picker is a hell of a card in draft because it's not uncommon for games in draft to get so gummed up that like you just keep on playing your hands out and you can't. Neither of you can attack in. Shadowlands Bone Picker will mean that you will eventually be able to attack in. Yes. And is absolutely in our 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 place. Uh, mm -hmm. I was I was doing the, the quick like look at Minotaurs as the you know ah our Minotaur the, no this thing's actually okay as as stat line because 
just based on revenge if it never goes off, but okay is not what we have here with Shadowlands Bone Picker. So You can sort of make Minotaur's work as a constructed deck, but it's going to be a weak one, and Relentless Gorehorn helps out with that, but it's not going to ever happen in draft. It's just not. Sorry. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, here we have a couple good options. Uh, actually, a pretty good set here. Um, obviously there's, there's like, I'm, I'm looking at that sleigh and laughing. We're not picking that up, but let's take a look at the cards we could pick up. We have Zedan, uh, Cupbearer, Longshot Marksman, Journeyman Armor, and Sparkbot. Right. Cupbearer is fine as a blood source. Uh, Marksman is a, like we've talked about before, a real solid two drop. Uh, more armors in your deck actually does make each every armor better because it means you'll be able to follow up armors with armors if you have to. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a two. Um, like, the Marksman is a card that, like, if I curve Marksman into armor, is is a strong place to be. Basically, I'm... almost every other uh, free drop in the game, basically. And it just is a, you know... It's a good... It's a really good curve that beats almost everything else that they could put down in the game. Yes. Only, like giant walls which are meaningless on the board anyway or like seraph uh beats <laughs> that pretty much right but yeah you're gonna get seraph and draft yeah that's happened to me before and it's miserable i've i've seen that mark make yeah mark does also make the the viper's bites like a an inclusion that i wouldn't be sad to do yeah i i I think you can't really go wrong here, but the, it's more of a choice between Marksman and Armorer to me. Agreed. I, I think Cupbearer is fine, but it's not nearly as good of a card as those two in our deck. Agreed. I'm, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with the Mark. Another Slay. Oh, but also um, another a, a, a card here on our, our, our time side that I like a lot, Xenon Initiation. Ooh, Zenon Initiation is great. Yeah. So that, that's a strong... Like <laughs> We continue seeing some... some the, the luck of the draw showing us these Argentport cards, and not a lot we can do with that. We've already... The, 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 the time has already passed for us to be making those sorts of decisions. So... Yeah. Let's, let's pick up some more removal. Uh... Yeah, gun down is the other choice here, but I feel like we'll be able to find more things like gun down rather than in Xenon initiation, which is a bit like harder for us to locate. Mm -hmm. And the real thing here, the the real what this is actually saying is, I feel this confident in our mana base. You know, like <laughs> I I feel like we're closer to a three color deck than a two color splash because of how you know multiple strangers, four banners. Like we have this. We have colors very heavily co covered. Oh, I can, pick, All right. I can pick up another two here. Blink Wolf is actually a, a pretty reasonable card. So long as it's not in your opener. If but yeah. A, if it's in your opener, you're sad. You're a little <laughs> sad. Uh, you feel real bad, but that's okay. Because if it, because it, you know, that means that it's a seven out of 45 chance. And well, oh, okay. Seven out of, it's more like seven, nine out of 45, but still. Because yeah. you don't want to draw it on turn two either of uh, one or two either right you see it on top of your deck on turn one and you're like oh no <laughs> no dog you're too fast slow down oh no you're too fast dog uh book bot's good too like mm -hmm. book bot is uh, a friend book bot is a big helper helps you know filter your draws hold off flyers uh, book bot cool. is a time creature Though. That's the, and, that's the problem I have with it. Yeah, and also we don't have any weapons to put on creatures right now, which make book buy oh. like a thousand times better if you do. Best we have is we could like journeyman armor or combust it. Yeah, that's true. Which are are like at least reasonable options. Yeah. <laughs> the nightmare turn one blink wolf on top turns to a turn two armor on top. Yeah. No, don't say those words. That makes you feel real bad just hearing them. I'm 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 pulling dog. Ooh, another Xenon <coughs> initiation. Solid. Okay. Again, like 
the the real thing with Xenon initiation isn't like ah oh, I need to remove my opponents like you know like small ground units that are in the way. Xenon initiation to me is more of a tool that allows us to deal with flying. Like you know, in they, a way, it's additional copies of combust. Yeah, uh, in in a lot of cases, uh, in some we might have things that are a little too large, mm -hmm. but no, that still feels good. Ooh, geez, we're getting a lot of good time. Archive curator showing back up here with almost no competition, which that's fine by me. Again, I think our deck can support three color at this point, and that's that's fine by me. Really, right, the really the question is, how do I make? Uh, fire more real because at this point fire is the the heavy splash we only have like five fire cards i want to be playing yeah it's just the the revolver the tyrant um the armorers and combust i guess is that your last thing? yeah pick com that, combust pick is my boss. Com com yeah i know the, i'm i i haven't like picked any cards in here because i was i decided that this pick was so obvious i'd rather take some time to uh take a look at what my deck looks like and decide how real that is i still think even if i'm because of how our, our fixing looks we're we're still really fine with with the fire again like we have mm -hmm. this really heavy fixing stuff so pick up some wasp Ooh, reforge oh boy <laughs> oh geez we could have had knife reforge I know, yeah, we, yes! I know that was the, that was a that was a fear i had when i passed knife is that we could have lived in the world where we got to knife and then they kill our knife and then we go reforge knife and they're like oh shit at the very least you still have armorers and the runic revolver because just throwing this out here zero mana one one weapon is not great zero mana three three weapon oh four mana three three weapon is pretty good yeah uh, um, I have two cards I'm focused on here. It's, uh, Xenon Banner, which is maybe a little bit of a, like, do we really need more of that? And then, like, Awaken Sentinel, which, Awaken Sentinel, I've had a lot more, I haven't had a ton of luck playing with the card, but holy smokes does the card, has the card, like, stopped me in a lot of drafts. Yeah, it's a real good wall. It will get in there, and it will block pretty much anything. And it can still attack in a lot of the time, yeah, because yeah. of the 3-5. Yeah, if we're in a situation where it can make, you know, good attacks. I feel like having yeah. one copy of it is fine, so. Uh, and I'm immediately told that I made the wrong 50-50 coin flip, which, whatever. You know, you, you don't get to... to... <laughs> it's 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 a co the coin flip for the reason, so... Yep. It happens. Um, inspire Obedience? Yeah, that's probably better than Memory Keeper. I don't like Lethrai Memory Keeper. The thing dies way too easily. Lethrai Memory Keeper, I want to say, has a really strong uh, case for being the worst creature in the game. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's not like... It's different than Magma Rager and is in Hearthstone because hero powers don't exist, but... But it's still a 4-1, right. you know? It dies to literally any creature, almost. Oh, wow! Second to last pick, we get to, to include... Choose between either Cupbearer or the Amarian... Uh, I keep one Amarin, not a Marcian. Uh, Archaeologist. I think the Cupbearer is more real here as a mm -hmm. way to slow things down. Once you're... Uh, I mean, Archaeologist is fine, especially in a three-color deck, but... I'm just going to throw this out here. If you plan on playing that Umbrin Thurster, you probably want to have at least one source of blood in your deck. Just yeah. the one or two. That's it. Yeah. But still. Some blood. I don't know. It's a little bit of blood. <coughs> All right. Well, a rare we're absolutely not picking, uh, both based on its color and its function. Um, blood. Here we've got... Oh, I'm taking a look. Slumbering Stone is is real. Amber Acolyte is real. Katana is functional. Yeah. Huh. I mean, it's pick one, so having a couple things to choose from makes a lot of sense. Uh, Acolyte, I think, is probably what I would pick here. Yeah, even with how much fixing we already have, I still love the hell out of Amber Acolyte. Like, Amber, yeah. Amber Acolyte 
Ember Acolyte shows this power in Constructed very much, but it, it also has this in Limited where it, uh, you, you play it and you're like, oh, that's just a 2-1. But somehow a 2-1 body is enough to trade with anything that came before it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> on top of that, I mean, also in Constructed, when Amber like, Acolyte hits the board on uh, three, it means yeah. that Sandstorm Titan is immediately following it. Right. Yeah. And also in Constructed, Amber Acolyte can later in the game be a 4 3 threat from a, or a 6 5 uh, threat because. Uh, 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 yeah, no, uh, and Acolyte would be my pick over anything else here. Uh, you have few things that really want that. Like, we don't have... The only card that really interacts with the Slumbering Stone is our Combust. Yeah, it would be Combust or, like, just flat letting it block, which... Ooh, we got a... This is a I was just pretty saying... <laughs> tough choice. <laughs> I think right. Nightblade is really, really good in drafts. Uh, right, on a completely unanswerable threat. Yep. Uh, in the sense that, like... Especially because I do have a couple ways to, to, to buff it, you know... I have, I have a couple... How many flyers do we have? They're mostly called Archive Curator. Uh, we have two Archive Curators, a Blistering Wasp, and uh, Umbran Thurster, if it floats. That's our, that's, that's our flyer count right now. Which, Umbran Thurster may not float because we don't have that many sources of life gain. In the deck. Yeah, I think our life gain in the deck is two cards at the moment, and that's if I'm it's... including Xenon Augury. You know, like yeah. Which Zenon, if you're including Zenon Augury, also if you're including Zenon Cupbearer, I might include Zenon Cupbearer. I I so I I, I I've had a, a a a bit of an odd. I don't know. Maybe it's not as odd as I I feel, but draft is this odd place where real decks decks that my opponent have like strong functional cards that work well and synergize well. Are, are decks that I'm able to run over and just kind of, like, brush to the side. And then decks where my opponent's deck contains only two mana, two, two strangers and combat tricks I are completely unbeatable, and there's nothing I can do about it. Not even, like, strangers that pump each other. No, just two mana, two, twos with no text. You know, I actually have encountered almost the exact same thing. It's weird. Like, okay, by all means, this powerful draft plan that is full of strong moves should work. But no, it's just actually the pile of bears often just works. Right, P pile of bears p backed up by, like, three pummels, two finest hours, and, like, f three rapid shots, and just bears. Is that actually the move? Is Are, are combat tricks actually insanely strong in this game, and I don't, I super undervalue them? I don't know. I... I'm I'm thinking they might be. Anyway, I'm, I'm I I decided to bring that up as a point because I wanted to delay the pick. Uh, <laughs> I think it's my plan. Same. I really like Warband Chieftain. I'm gonna be reasonable, like real here, but like Nightblade is something I would love to put Journeyman Armors on. On top of that, we already have a decent number of playable fives. Ooh, speaking of things, I want to put like Journeyman Armors on, and things we can put on. We've got. Obsidian Golem. Mm. Very Obsidian Golem's great. Yeah, very strong too. Um, probably competing with Amethyst Acolyte in this pack. Xena Destroyer and Towering Terrazon are also real cards. Magma Javelin's less real, but like, I'd pick it sometimes. Did you know Obsidian Golem was incredibly real in the event that just happened? Because both sides of it only cost one. Did both sides? I was told that... The, the back half of it, for some reason, didn't. No, the back half of it totally did. It does still count as a multi-faction card, even though it doesn't require influence, I think. Okay, like, somebody told like, showed me a screenshot of the card at cost, and I'm assuming that was a dang bug. Probably was a bug, because I played that card in the event. And okay, it, it might have been, like, something that happened, like or maybe it was the cudgels from... Uh, the cuddles from uh, Statuary Maiden also actually only cost zero because they counted as multi-faction still for me. Okay, cause had a display bug. All right, well I'm gonna pick Golem right. here anyway. Yeah, Golem here better than every other card in it except for maybe Team Destroyer. But I heard a top end. And I'm looking for that top end. I think I've I've found the one piece of top end I would like. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> mm, that's the good top end stuff. That is triple time, though. I'm aware. Okay. I'm, I'm that's fair. I'm aware of what that looks like. Um, it is hard to play 
but it is also if you get to seven, it's almost unbeatable in draft unless they remove it immediately. We have, yeah, we have we have an infinite sea of fixing is the the real trick here, and yeah. I'm I'm feeling like what we zero playable turn ones. Yeah, you're you're right. Uh, we we don't we don't and like. The problem is, even if I pick up Grenadin drones, with how our power base is functioning, uh, we, we we might not even be able to play it on one because it's like we have two banners in our hand and a shadow sigil, and it's like, oh well. Crap. Now hold on, I think we have a ticking Grenadin, which means that we might be able to do ticking Grenadin. Did we grab that? We did. We did. We did. We oh, we do have a okay. ticking Grenadin. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna go with the the incredibly silly late game buster of a card that just makes it so I always want to be sandbagging a sigil late and top deck this and get 10 power and toughness. Yep. Pillar of Mar is really good. Yeah. Um, okay, we have some shadow choices here. Um, Blackguard Sidearm, Stonescar Magus, and Amethyst Acolyte are all hanging out here. All those pretty strong cards. Yeah, Stonescar Magus is one of my favorite tools for fighting the person who has decided that their deck needs to be 20 strangers and combat tricks. Yep, because that will kill two strangers, pretty much. Yeah, Amethyst Acolyte is uh, notable because, as you mentioned with uh, the, the Warp Cannon Bearer, minus one, minus one, like... Shockingly relevant. Yeah, but Gun... Gun, we have some really good targets to throw on, even just, like, mostly because a good target for gun is a two-drop. Like, just, you know, just any old two-drop. Yeah. But, yeah. But even in our deck, we have we have things that very much can benefit from it, uh, such as, like, Ardeport Instigator gets way too big to block on curve. Obviously, the Thry Ranger with it is really dumb. Um, handing off our Nightblade power, uh, Shadowlands Bone Picker gets very silly with Quick Draw. Ooh, Shadow Shadowlands Bone Picker becomes unreasonable with Quick Draw. Yes, it becomes the Abyss. It yep. Becomes flat the Abyss. So I'm going to pick up the Abyss and see if we can add it to our deck. Ooh, finally, some removal versus Grenadine Drone, but execute. We have, uh... <laughs> made our peace with having almost no one drops so just go ahead yeah i think the fact that our deck right now doesn't have very much like we're you know we're in shadow and a bit in fire and we don't have any like outside of one combust real removal having having execute available seems like a very good thing execute yep uh here's some strong combre cards we're not picking and, like, Scheme versus Calderon Gunsmith. Hmm. I'm just taking a look. There's only a Lothry Ranger that that activates, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just that and, like, maybe some Lifesteal. Scheme is not incredible in draft or anything, though. I think it's still the pick. Yeah, because there's almost nothing that uh, Gunsmith interacts with. It's just going to deal, like, you know, maybe... Three or four damage to your opponent, and that's it. Yeah, we're gonna have to have some 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 talks with our our uh, our top end, likely Umbran Thurster getting cut, things like that. Yeah, one Inspire Obedience is fine, I think, in a deck in draft. Yep. Uh cool. A Stone Scar Magus versus a Refresh. Stone Scar Magus, I have a lot of respect for. Agreed. Uh, uh, Alright, we're at kind of last pick auto picks that are... I'm not playing a pilfer. I guess I can play Centaur Raid Leader in a world. Last pick, Karmic Guardian. Alright, I'm going to build this deck in, in from the ground up rather than like at removing cards because, goodness, this is a little bit of a... A deck here, so let's 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 add in our our strongest moves and start m moving down the list from there. Uh, so what is what's the core of what we're working with? The core of what you're working with is going to be like Bone Picker, Infernal Tyrant, all of your fixing, um, 
your Xen initiations, uh, and then like fill out your curve from there, and then start putting more things in. Like, so you get two armors, your uh, Lothar Ranger. Your... Yeah. You pretty much just want to have a good, strong curve out, and that's basically what your deck wants to do. So just make sure you have a good mana curve is my is my thing on this deck. That's all. Yeah. Hell, I'm looking at like I la I la very late picked up a Dune Phantom, and that could be a a well worth it include, just based on uh wanting to stick around and stay alive till late. Uh, Basically, so you can make sure that uh, your weakness, which is flying, uh, doesn't get through. Yes. Because you only have three blockers in the air, pretty much flat. All right, I'm going to wait on... I still want to wait on putting in the banners. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I like our curve right now. We still need to put in some of these fours and fives. Um, hold on, where is... Oh, right, that's a four drop, not a five drop. I was like, where the heck is the... the, the unblockable uh light hoof but light hoof just like fits yeah um light hoof's really good it used to be four or five it was actually too good out of four or five well it was a four or five for five no i thought it was a four or five it was for four. it was a four or five for five i played against that card a lot okay fair enough yeah they they Never they mind. they they made the card strong like I don't know. It was still good as as that, but like not the greatest. As I'm gonna put in the Dune Phantom. Okay. Do I want to put in like Swear Vengeance? Is that something that's worth? In yeah, and I think that particularly interacts with Swear Vengeance, or do you really want to stick around? Mm, not a ton. It does interact with Zen Initiation. Ooh, that's true. That would give me like double killer. Yeah, so that might be worth, considering you got two of the Zenith Initiations, it might be totally worth using for that. Yeah. Uh, also on that note, Viper's Bite doesn't include, wouldn't be the worst. Yeah, because it's got basically the same deal, huh? Yeah, handing off Deadly and like, like, well, let me check my unit count. What am I at right now? 20 units. Okay, I can definitely include some, some more of these tricks. Yep. I want to say maybe the second Awakened Sentinel is fine to include as well. Oh, well, okay. Amber Monument will be a better five overall. Hmm. Who knows? 28 on this curve. So the cards I don't have in the deck right now that I would like to include, or at least are on the short list for including, um, are Inspire Obedience, Stone Scar Magus, both of those are pretty strong removal options. Awaken Sentinel. Stone Scar Magus would also make uh, the Square Vengeance a little bit better. And, and combust as well. Yeah. Alright, let me put this deck into this mode so I can take a look again at like its curve and such and decide how much power I want to include. I, I there are there's four banners in a monument. Please ignore the fact that those aren't in the deck. I'm I'm ignoring those for current purposes because we don't I, I don't want them messing with the, the count. Do I sound okay? Yeah. Okay, so it's actually you that sounds like a robot, and I didn't understand a single thing you just said. Oh, that's weird. I'm, hopefully, that I'm, I'm guessing that doesn't transfer over here on the... That might just be Discord doing funky things. Uh, uh, the point is, I was, I was talking about uh, disinclusion of the banners right now, just for simplicity's sake, and also trying to figure out how much power we actually want. Hmm. 
if I did make a cut from this, what it would be. That was an incredibly slow reconnect. Huh. We'll try that and see if it helps you. I think maybe a server switch would help out, but... I can do that. Um... Yeah, so just thinking about deck inclusions, deck disinclusions, things like that. Uh, if I made a cut, what would it be? Would it be the Runic Revolver? That was my twenty-four. That was my twenty-eighth inclusion here. Would it be Combust? I don't know how much I like taking out tricks or things like that. Okay. All right. Hey, you sound fine. There we go. Cool. So yeah, what? How do you how do you feel about the the list as it is right now? Any cuts you would like, or do you think that seventeen powers enough? How do you feel? Uh, you're going up to seven. You have a like a, a curve up to seven. And also, Pillar of Mar wants more power in your deck. That's the problem. Pillar is actually the the reason I would want to go to 18. Like, okay. So, I understand why you consider Dune Phantom to be, like, important to make sure you don't die to flyers. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it would probably be my cut immediately out of this deck so I could, like, support 18 or something. That's fair. That's that's especially more so that we have archive curators to like throw flyers back down onto the ground and block other flyers. You've also got the combust, the Xen initiations. Um, you've got the gun, which can handle small flyers. You have a decent number of ways to handle flyers. Not in like not great ways, but they work. Yeah. I would. I personally. The problem is that uh, one of your lands is a banner, not a banner, uh, a monument, which is sort of more like only half a land, you know? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll take out the phantom. We'll add in our, our uh, four banners and our, uh, where's our monument? That's all the way to the left of here. Then we'll quick figure out what our actual power base wants to be. Fire is still our uh, heavy, like our, our heavier splash. Uh, Shadow has more... Yeah, we have two different plans with the deck. Like we Yeah, you want to curve out and swing into your opponent and kill them that way with while also getting rid of as much of their things in the way as you can with your early removal stuff. Mm -hmm. And then your late game plan is to survive until Infernal Tyrant or Pillar of Amar, and then you run rough shot over them with that those. Which, I'm happy that that plan is relegated to just a couple cards... So, yes. that, so that our aggressive plan isn't bogged down by, like, an opener that has multiple of these late-game cards. It's like, what are we doing? Plus, if you have to as well, um, it also has uh, Shadowlands Bone Picker in there, which uh, does double duty as a decent three-drop on its face. And then also, late-game becomes the Abyss. Yes. Um. Okay, so looking at power, it's likely going to be that I need... So the auto-include is going to do something like... Five five three or something like that, and I'm not certain if that's correct. I'm just double checking what what our include is. You have infernal like your most some color focused things are light hoof, infernal tyrant, and pillar of the mar. Yes. So you probably need. Mm. Well, the thing is that shadow. All of my banners are shadow. Yeah. Um, right now, so right now, if I count my my power sources. Um, no, you got it in one, five, five, three, yeah. Yeah, so, like, if I count our power sources, we have nine shadow sources, eight time sources, and five fire sources. I think that's right. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, of Overall. Oh, oh, also, there's some strangers I'm not counting there. Uh, yeah. Which, like, we have two strangers and an amber acolyte, which are also uh, pretty hefty for fixing that. I kind of like mm -hmm. where this is. What's our fire requirement? Yeah. Uh, Infernal Tyrant is double fire. Luckily, it's it's not of uh, not Vorniclex. Uh, 
Yeah, and Infernal Tyrant is not the Stone Scar triple requirement to both type. That's Voprex, yeah, the, um, the, right. the Great Ruin. I was like, I said Vorticlerx, I'm like, that's a magic card, right? Yeah, that's a Praetor. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the Praetor no one likes. That's the green that's Praetor. Praetor. Oh, God. One of the last EDH games I played, somebody put that out on, like, turn four, and I was just so sad. Like, who even plays Vorniclex? No. Like, no, get that out of here. Like, sweet, turn four Vorniclex, and whoever taps out to Wrath, it loses. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's rock. Yep. All right, let's get in there. Be oh. caught up with that. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Vorniclex, for those not familiar, doubles the mana your lands make and then makes it so your opponent's lands uh, don't untap when tapped for for mana. Yep, which means it's uh, both a basically Mirari's Wake if you, or Heartbeat of Spring. Mm -hmm. um, and also a... what? There's a card that does that exact thing, right? I, like lands, sort of like Winter's Orb sort of thing, but yeah. specifically just for lands. I'm mulliganing this. I don't like... It's incredibly slow. I don't like how slow it is. I like its its color requirements and stuff. This hand looks exactly the same as far as speed, but 12 times worse as far as uh, yeah. being able to play anything. We need Shadow? If we get a Shadow, I'm, I don't feel too bad about it. And Shadow is the most prevalent uh, source in the deck. With ten right. possible draws that can get us it at this point. Problem is, ten possible draws out of thirty-six is way too low. Yeah, okay. We are... Looks like we are going to be... Uh, we're not even going to be losing this one to being off-color. We're just going to be losing this one to mulligating to a two-power two hand and then falling over dead. Which... Right. Is a happenstance. It does happen. Oh, okay, we're one turn. Oh, you are. You are. Now you sound. Now you sound very robotic. Oh, but like incredibly so. Um, how do I want to move forward with this? I could gun and go that direction, but I kind of like putting more on the board. The fact that our opponent faded four is really nice. Like, very nice. Okay, and they have Alchemical Blast. Sure, that's fine. If, I, if we can play Archive Curator before they hit six, I'll feel very good. That's very bad. I just miserable. Clearly, my want to, to diversify threats has, has caused us to end up in a very poor situation. Okay, and then here comes the uh, flyer being a 4-4. And from here, we are, uh, as they say, done. I can, I can put it on the ground, but that's so little so late. They can't get blast it in response. That is uh, a part of Eternal that is very, like, different from magic. Uh, you cannot respond to auras being played, or, or weapons uh, the being played. There's there's no window for it. It's part of why, well, the Slapp are better in this game overall. Game than the average aura. I'm, I'm very sorry that you just sound like a robot right now, and I cannot understand anything that you just said. Yes. Uh, you may want to restart Discord. It might be effective for you. Oh, hell, I'm sorry. Anyway, we know that we're not drawing a power, and we know that we are dead, so... I'm going to wiggle some cables if you'll hold with me for just a minute. 
Hello? Hey. Okay. A little better? A little worse? About the same. One step forward, one step back. Yeah. Like, I'm not really sure what else I can affect on this. I have no idea how to answer that question, T Flash Ash. Unless you were my opponent there, in which case, uh, very strong cards uh, within the two colors. Uh, looked like a bit of a loss of a curve, but neither of those things are going to matter against uh, a, a struggling opponent. And even if we weren't a struggling opponent, uh, our opponent had a lot of tools that would have uh, done well against us. Uh, not mm -hmm. the, not to say they were in in if we, basically if we could archive curator the two two flyer that would have been very nice. How about now? Now you sound better. Okay, it might just be like periodic connection to their servers right now being a bit spotty. That's that's fun. Jank Junction. All right, we are jump. Oh, I again we'll have to mulligan this one for lack of real plays uh, and lack of. Uh, colors even with all the fixing we have we might just fall over to to oh never mind this is looking i like this curve a lot right now and yeah, this one's looking good yeah i'm gonna have to i think i have to play that monument on i don't have to play that monument if i don't want no to. you can wait on it the only thing it's not preventing you from doing it the only thing it's preventing you from doing is that curator that's it yeah because i i'll fix for the okay i'm, I'm willing to take the bet on Amber Monument here. It's a. I mean, you have a play on three, if you have to, in the form of that execute. Instead, like it's not a creature, but. Okay. Cool. I don't know. As far as uh, uh, people are talking about being able to respond to equipment and such, and I. I'm uncertain how great it is that that's, that's not, like, effective, that it isn't. I know it's a choice, but I, I don't like how certain things are respondable and certain things aren't. Not to say equipment, but, like, targeting effects. Um, the thing is that on a lot of creatures that target, like, with summon effects, you actually can respond to them. But you can't respond to, like, units without effects coming down. Well, you can only respond to units that have targeting effects that specifically target your your stuff. So yes. if your opponent plays a Valkyrie Enforcer and tries to silence your thing, you can respond. If they use Valkyrie Enforcer to silence their own thing, you don't get a window. Which right. feels very weird that the same card can result in two different outcomes. Um, what do I want to do here? Like, I obviously I know what the play is, but do I want to play def defensively or offensively? It's a good question. You have that, have that execute. You can kill him with uh, however you want, really. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with offensively. I, I like this a little bit more because if they've got a way to get rid of that... Okay. So cool. I was thinking if they have a way to get rid of that, then playing defensively won't help at all. But if they do... Uh, but if they've got a way to do, uh, you know, get rid of it, then at least you've done the three damage with it. Yep. Style thing. Nice! Okay, I was wondering where their uh, tinkered card was, and we we found our answer. That's very good. Mm -hmm. um, I can probably silence this thing off so that I'm not taking six... Uh, I, hell, I could, I could attack in and see if the execute happens. That is true. Maybe that's more realistic here. Let's attack in and see if the execute happens. I'll, I'll let them gain six life. Okay. So, here I'm going to silence this off so that they don't gain six. And then we'll just execute it next turn. Mm hmm. So, I'm taking six. I really like that everything's in on this unit. Uh, and we can just work from here. Oh, nice. We even found a, a, a drop to play in between. And I can even play that right now before execute. Get a little bit extra damage in. 
Yo, execute being, uh, you know, kill something, deal three damage, and that's real good. Yes. Also, of note, our opponent is empty-handed. Well, we still yep. have two very strong choices in our hand. A 5-5 five, five and a 4-4 four, four that hands off an unblock ability. Okay. Streetwise Informant is... No. <laughs> our pay five is better than yours. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm just gonna start with the Reinarch. Uh, that seems much better for our start. Yeah, lets us get in. Uh, they passed on a power drop there. Okay. Oh, they're actually playing Primal Sigils. Whoa. Oh shit! So they're oh they are just straight four color then, huh? Oh, and a Smuggler Stash on six. That is extremely bad because it picks up that Crown Watch Longsword for. Uh, for this unblockable endurance unit. Yikes. Uh, don't like that at all. Unsure how we're going to be able to respond. Run it them down? Might be run them down. Uh, I could put the gun on my... I could put the gun on my Argentport Instigator in order to be able to attack with that. Um, I could also put the gun on my flyer. I, given the, what they have right now in their hand, I don't think putting the gun on the flyer will particularly matter because you're not going to worry about having to use evasion to get in. Well, I am. But, I am. This has endurance, and it's going to be a, a, a five eight. Oh, that's right. Like I yes, will never, I endurance. will never be able to attack again after this turn. You're right. Never mind. I thought I forgot that had endurance. Uh, what do I put my opponent... Basically, I'm asking if Minotaur Light Hoof can be lethal in a turn, and the answer looks to be close to yes. Uh... I'm gonna go gun on a flyer. So, I could get in for 11 now, you're right. If I put the gun on the on the three three, but I want to have a longer term threat with the Minotaur Light Hoof. That's how I want to deal the last nine points of damage. Right. Because this is a four turn clock right now. The uh, throwing down the the, the uh, evasion on this this creature. It's four turn clock, and then like hopefully. I can still work around this. Xena, oh, another Xena Destroyer. Hell, that sucks. No, that's the one they picked up out of the grid. Grave. Mm, uh, okay, that. Oh, right. That was. Oh, sorry, Cabal Cutthroat was the one I silenced. Hell, that still sucks. Um, because a life gain is is quite bad. Um, right. What do I want to do here to pick up? I think I play Minotaur Light Hoof. Get in for eight. The Xenon Destroyer gets in for... Gets three lifelink. Then I just try to go wide? Uh, it gains three lifelink, but then the, also takes take a, one. Yeah. Which I think means that, yeah, going wide should... I think it'll let you do, like... You need to swing in with uh, your Archive Curator twice more, I think, is going to be how the math will work out. The thing is, I think you have enough turns if, they don't be, if they're not going to play anything to do that. They have another Stranger they picked up. Yeah, they picked up a Stranger as their other card, so... So they go up to seven, down to six, play a, str a Horu Stranger, so they... And a Xenon Cultist, okay. Okay, I've got... Okay, Cupbearer, I think, will let you uh, survive for another turn and then swing it with your 3-5 twice, you know, ter next turn and win. Well, they can armor gain. That's right. If they think to do that, which they probably should, but... You do slightly outpace the armor gain, I think. What happens on an all-out... What happens on an all-out is that you kill them, I think. Because they will... No. no. No, no, they'll survive with at least one life. Yeah, and it, they'll survive with two life, because they're going to block the 3-3 three, three with the 2-4, and then they block the 4-4 uh, the four, four with the 2-2. Two, two. 
I'm gonna go in with flying and then play out our cupbearer. Yeah, uh, we don't get in for any damage if I do that. So th I know one. Okay, so they drew a sigil, which sucks because that means they can armor gain and play their two two. But I think we just. Oh god, yeah, we get there. I th I'm pretty sure we get there with Argentport Instigator is actually how we're gonna win. Because it will kill them with something dying, right? Because they're going to have to chump block with two Sky Cray Strangers, and they're at five. Yes, I think that will actually do it. You're right. So okay. let's hit the button and get in. Uh, we'll li Luckily, we're going to life gain so that we don't die back. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if we didn't life gain here, we would die back. Next, they have to block everything to survive. Yes. And the thing is that they don't have enough good blocks to, like, survive every hit. Right. Like, yeah. So this will kill them. <laughs> this rules? This is a good way to die. <laughs> God. That is really... Thank you, Argentport Instigator, for having an effect. <laughs> it That is... That effect will kill you multiple times if you play against Burn Queen. It will kill yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll you'll die. Your opponent will die. They'll die. It, that was that was very tense. The, the Smuggler Stash turned that from, like... A game I think we just had on flat lockdown to a game that we had to play very carefully in order to win. Yep, I mean, that's kind of what Smuggler Stash does, you know? It just refreshes all your threats again. Yeah, th specifically them having the, 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 the corn watch. Yeah, the one point from Execute was needed. Corn watch? Yeah, corn watch. Nice. They watch the corn. Ah, a bunch of corn fellas, them. Yeah. Uh, this hand is okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's not incredible, but it's okay. I'm going to keep it because it's alright. It's got your colors in it. It's got removal. And it's got a four drop that it will actually be decent at doing the removal kind of thing. Yeah. Ooh, uh, they might be stuck on a uh, single... Pro single color right now. That is, they did redraw. That is a possibility. If so, we'll want to... Nope. If they've fixed that. How good's your draw? Anything? I would like you to play a Storm Crow. Not, or the, the, the Storm 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, Storm Crasher. There okay. we go. Thank you for thank you for playing the card I wanted you to play. Um, With this, I'm Do just... Do you wait? Yeah, I, I'm going to play the Cup Bearer, and we're going to... Okay kill it next turn because if they go like big on it where it's like aha now i throw my my swords on it we just execute it mm -hmm. and even if for some reason i can't execute it like i'm pretty sure i'll be able to like things would have to go really horribly wrong for us to not be able to execute it and if they decided for whatever strange reason they would take that trade you would have done it in heartbeat oh so. absolutely like, they would have to put, like, a, a, a saddle on it and then somehow give it Aegis for me to feel like I've made a mistake. Even if they put a saddle on it, that's that's not bad. All right. So now I could just take that out. You've got two very strong plays if you want to remove their entire board. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's necessary right now. I kind of... I might just want to put the Reinarch down. Yeah, because that, that's even better to zoom initiation up because it's, you know, it's got Overwhelm and you get to gain two life here if you want to swing in. Yeah. But... I could also kill her off. You could kill her off the, the you know. Yeah, the 3-3. Three, the 3-3 three, three. Three agents did if you want, but I don't know. I think just playing the Reinarch might be just the best play here. I like having a 5-5. Five five. If something goes, like, wrong with this... Again, we're, we're a turn off of our opponent having uh, the the pump on the 2-2, the two -two, and that's fine. Copper Hall Herald. Whatever. That's not a big deal. Ooh. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that's that's really good. You get you can just play both of those. Yeah. So, like, you're... You would want to silence the one three, and then you'd want to initiation the two two, right? So you can get as much damage possible through with the overwhelm. It also lets me play around a pump. Yeah, and I mean the pump that's scariest is finest arrow, which doesn't work because it just becomes a five five. 
Right. So let's let's go that route. So I'm gonna go ahead and silence the one three, and we'll see if they have a card in hand too here. There's a delay. Yep, they do have one. So again, they would have to have something better than finest hour here. Yeah, because strength of many, which is the all the other one that could come up pretty often, uh, is exactly a finest hour right now. So. Yep. So we are we are I'm playing around that like happenstance mm -hmm. um i think from here i'm willing to just pass oh it was a wisdom of the elders all right okay yeah makes sense our, our play didn't change based on that at all so we, we're, we're fine i'm sorry Draw ice heart nice okay oh. um what you're probably gonna do is you're gonna block with your tutu and then execute it yeah i'm going to attack for one in the air but yeah, that card can't live. Uh, it's too big. It's too big. Draw Ice Heart is way too big. Oh no! Oh my god. Oh no, now the next thing on top of their deck is way too big. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is that is some strong move. <laughs> uh, thank goodness for that armor turning this into a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, that actually matters because they can't triple block and kill. Yep. Alright, um, I'm going to do the armor first. Yeah. Put a hat on that rhino. Rhinosaur. Okay, put our opponent to nine. Now the question is, do I care to execute? I think I still. I think I still. God, that scares the hell out of me. Like, uh, mm, draw ice heart is an incredibly scary card. Just flat because six mana, six seven with a very relevant uh, infiltrate. Mm -hmm. Deal damage to each enemy unit equal to that spell's cost. That could very well wrath most of your board. I don't want to leave that around. I, I don't yeah. want to risk it. Even though the, the card that's going to come off the top is going to have plus six, plus seven, I I have to do that. Yeah, because, like, the, the concern is, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Wh what the hell? Nice. <sighs> right pull. off, right off the top, and here we are, the seven twelve. All right. W luckily, luckily, I say uh, that has endurance. I don't know what we do about it. Um, I need to draw combust. Yes. Uh, do I call here? Just take two. Uh, I would just take two. Yeah, I don't just think. Two yeah, I don't think it's worth like calling that. Execute. T oh, okay. <sighs> okay. Um. um Oh, okay. Armor on the top's really nice because that gives us a body that can block the seven twelve. Yep, that can block. It does have Warcry too, as on, on top of everything else. So yeah. if you have to, you might want to just put a bunch of things in front of this and let it deal with them as it does. Yeah. But... All right. Well, let's. At least we get a body here. We get an eight eight. I can block this bird now if I need to, which I probably will start. I'm gonna hold. Uh, uh, any power in our hand from this point. There's nothing we can draw that makes playing the power like a good idea because we could draw pillar. Yeah. You know, a card would to draw would actually kind of not a... be incredible right now. Hmm. Infernal Tyrant would kill three of our guys. It does gain us. Um, <laughs> how much is that? Twelve, 12 life. Twelve it's life. Still. Yeah. Yeah. It has Warcry also, not Warcry two. For yeah. No. It. It's, yeah, Warcry as well. Yes, yes. Somebody was asking, wait, does that a... No, it's, it's Warcry 1. Um, this card would be incredible this, with Warcry 2. It would be absurd. The thing that scares me the most here is the fact that our opponent uh, has passed... Yeah, okay, there, that's fine. Oh, God, they get a second hit with that, too. Oh, this is very bad. Uh, we're yeah, just, buddy. We're just going to die to things in the air now. Well, that 712 on the ground is scary, but also we can't deal with their things in the air well, anymore. Well, okay. We have a top deck that wins the game flat. Opponents at 8. There's much to learn here. Opponents at 8. Like, unblockable 8-8, eight, eight, it says the game's over. That's true. Okay. Uh oh um, Also, I'm both of your flyers are irrelevant now. Whew. Yeah, it, it's... Incredibly, the three seven <laughs> flying endurance is actually scarier than the seven two endurance war cry. Yeah, and now I can block the three three. Like, that's... God, imagine if that uh, fucking that six that plus six plus seven was put onto that Haru. I know. Instead. God, that'd be terrifying. 
Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, we are in the bo Oh, dear! Mace no! Vale Drake, huh? And they're on 7 power, so immediate 6-6 six, six, uh, flyer with Aegis. Jeez. Uh, two turns to live from this point on. Uh... Actually, yeah. maybe Infernal Tyrants gaining us a uh, 12 life would be pretty welcome right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Com oh, combust. No, against doesn't the... work on the 6-6. Six, six. I was going to say, yeah, it doesn't work. But it does uh, kill the 7-12. <laughs> Which, given that they've got a 3-7 on the board, doesn't matter too much. Yeah, they could just, um, they could triple block and only lose two things, I think. Doing math on how, uh... All out, triple block, they go to one, crack back for lethal. Okay. So, the all out doesn't work. I kind of want to hold the combust then, I guess. Like, If you happen to rip another thing that targets... What do we have that targets still? The thing that I, I... Okay, so I think the card that we really want to pull is just the second Xena initiation, right? Yeah, so that's you can uh, kill the Misfil Drake. Also do teal damage to them. Uh, no, three I, damage to them. They'll die if I draw that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's the thing that we want to rip. I'm gonna kill their other flyer. Fair enough. That'll let us survive another turn. Because I want time. Mm -hmm. Time is the big thing here. Um, gonna... Don't say that. You know that means they're just going to draw time sigils. Uh, not possible. Oh, yeah. It's all of them, isn't it? Uh, well, oh, sorry. There are two other time. Oh, oh. 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 God, that's not enough. No, it still gets blocked by the 712, doesn't it? Also, I think I'm dead. Um, on crack back. No, 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 yeah. no, I'll, he I'll heal. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yep. You'll survive with, is that, it's just a single health, isn't it? So they can't all at me. Maybe they don't see that. Maybe they'll forget about life gain math. Yeah, so I have another turn. All right. If we'd killed the 712, I'd be dead right now. <laughs> Killing the 712 was n in no way the correct move. Okay, six. So we have two top decks that are... Ah, God, that's not it. Okay. Well. This lets you... As a really... No, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. It, it, it is a desperation-looking move where I... Hope that my opponent only attacks for six in the air rather than all outing me because that's my only option here. You know, like make my opponent think that I have some way of stopping them when I, I clearly don't because, well, we, we haven't been drawing the, the, the strongest of cards. That Aegis Flyer kicked us was the, the, the final thing out. Yep. They yep. had a really, really strong final move in the form of that Miss Veldrick. Yeah. It's a strong card. <laughs> Quite unanswerable. Yeah, we, we, we did have outs, but uh, we, we like if I would have been able to make unblockable 8-8, eight, eight, we finish the game there. If we if we get, draw our other Xenon initiation, I can just like attack down a 2-2 two, two and, and get down. But hoof, hoof. Uh... Yeah, Harsh Rule doesn't save us there either, yeah. Swarm so Vengeance specifically, this is obviously a hindsight play that you would literally have never done um, it, like, designed to keep that combust. Uh, I think Swarm Vengeance specifically calls out one of your units, right? Like one of your units? Yeah, uh, Spur Vengeance, Revenge. I think, does, and also Xenon Initiation does. Um, we're redrawing because this hand doesn't do anything. <sighs> okay, if I draw a time sigil, I'll feel good about what we currently have. And... Yeah, I just looked it up, but it says, uh, yeah, your use. Yeah. Like I said, that is 100% a move that you probably would never have done, but... 
right. I mean, hey, here's uh, one of the two jobs that completely stuffs Minotaur Grunt. Yep. Why I'm, I'm the only ones that really does. I'm pretty happy about that. Sure. Well, bad news. Heaven. Our opponent's even stuck on three. But getting stuck on three, slightly better than getting stuck on two. Yep. We do not have any... We have zero legal play. Or we have one legal play that's bad. Yeah, it's uh, a legal play that deals one damage to us, one damage to your opponent, and then gets rid of one thing. Yes. I mean, okay, that'll be a much better... It's a better play than play now, but... Still not incredible. <sighs> they're gonna have. They're they're just gonna keep playing more and more stuff here. Wing and that scares the hell out of me. Yep. I'm a turn away from discard. Yeah, jeez. I mean, this is even an 18 land. Yeah. Um, 18 sigil, whatever. The, uh, the, the the saddest part of this outcome is that it's it's maybe the most... To me, it's the most apparent, like, obvious outcome that could happen here. Yeah. Um, because I, I have this, this thought process that I go through with... Uh, I'm gonna show our opponent Amber Acolyte, and that'll be anyway. I, I have this 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 idea that I subscribe to, where the decks that look the best, the decks that have this incredible power, and that I'm the happiest with, are generally the ones that perform the worst. And conversely, the decks that perf that look horrible, have no business winning games, generally are the ones that go seven and one. You know. Mm hmm. It is the, the the process. I was very happy with the deck that we had built today. Was that lost three? I completely forgot. Uh, that was lost three. Yeah, we've we we lost twice to that happenstance, and then we lost once to that very close game against the Huru opponent. That's right. Okay. All right. Let me crack the dust on these. And are you down for a second one of these? Yeah, sure. I've got nothing to do. Cool. I'm actually just waiting on laundry, basically. All right. Oh, certainly. Certainly, there are a lot of things that you can do to 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 alter the the, the outcome. Yeah. In fact, we we did one of those <laughs> by including slightly a few, you know, a, a little bit more uh, sigils in the deck than is typical in a draft deck in this game. I think. Like, I think maybe 18 should be the baseline, but I almost, I I will, I like to draft aggressive decks and therefore almost always go for 17. This pack it's doesn't me. have much of anything in it for me. Uh, Not or, really. Like, Oasis Seeker is just a generic card? Oasis Seeker is a fine generic card. Um, yeah. I like Sanguine Sword, but it is not really something you first pick. Hmm... I have a thought. What's that? What if I pick Pummel? You want to go for the Bears and Tricks line? Yeah, what if that works? Like we okay, have, we go have like, for it. We have like two bombs, we have 12 Bears, and we have every combat trick available. Okay, yeah. Like how, like... Alright. Um, ooh, we could pick up Battle-Tested Stranger if I want a, a single piece of top end for that sort of deck. Or Clan yeah. Hero is a three drop that works well with it. Um, trigger Campy is a trick, but not terribly great one. I, uh, for the for the audience, uh, for the, for the viewers at home, uh, if you'd like to keep track of the 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 picks that I could have made, which which are uh, things that you can definitely do here, well, the Oasis Seeker would have been my pick one. 
which probably would have led to dis- Discipline Dominera as pick two. So. Yeah. Uh, for what it's worth, I think that Clan Hero is the card that makes Skycrag worthwhile to play in draft. I think I like that more than a. Like, Battle Tested Stranger is a. Uh, like, Clan Hero also works as, like, a, a bear in the sense of, like, it gives us a, a piece of top end for our deck. Yep. And I mean, it's 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 just really good as a common. It's a three mana three three sometimes, uh, but often it's a three mana five three, which is really strong. Yep. Uh, again, for those uh, keeping track of the the uh, deck that could have been Xenon Initiation is easily the pick, but Pummel is here. Yeah, so Pummel it is. <laughs> the best thing about this like draft is going to be we're going to see like two strangers in four packs. Yep. Exactly. Um, Minotaur Oathkeeper. If, or, or is Victor's Cry good enough as a trick? Victor's Cry will... I have played... I played a draft deck with three Victor's he, Cries in it. Oh, goodness. That was a fun time, let me tell you. Oh, goodness. I mean, if we just pick all the... Yeah, okay. Victor, uh, why are you crying so much? Was... Victor, no. Oh, no. It's okay, Victor. Uh, we're still waiting on those bears. Uh, they'll be delivered sooner or later. That's that's not too bad. A uh, jawbone hatchet could be reasonable as a pick. Copper all herald as well. But jawbone hatchet works as like a post removal spur on shaped like a trick. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's okay. I'm gonna trust in hatchet. Uh, Jack's Knife as a pre-trick, Arc Bully, and, I don't know, Sparkbot. I don't know, I don't like my, a lot in here. Arc Bully, I think, is the best card. Arc Bully is a 2-mana 3-2, which yeah. basically makes it a bear, except slightly stronger. Uh, Blink Wolf is like a bear. Blink Wolf is a bear. <laughs> it's half a bear that is very fast. Yeah. Fast bear. Uh, okay, Argentport Stranger. Hi. Please yeah. be included in our deck. Uh, sure. Spiked Buckler. All right, so we have no strangers yet. That's that's a good start for this. Uh, I could pick up Katana. I could pick up Crown Watch Cavalry. Crown Watch Cavalry is pretty solid. Tana is okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like both. Don't worry, we'll get there. We've only gone through one pack. Yeah, and in particular, a lot of the a lot of the two drops in the combat tricks really want are from the from, you know, the first set. So like, you know, find a stour and uh, a lot of the I guess we'd call them like allied faction. I don't even know how you uh, yeah. differentiate the, the factions between the omens and the. Um, there's not really a a notion of allied and enemy faction like colors right now in the game. I I assume they will make them at some point, but they haven't decided them quite yet. Torch, one of the few tricks that I will pick over the bears. Well, yeah, because torch is. Yep. It's really strong and good. Great. Um, hmm. Granite Acolyte? It's a three mana four one sometimes. It's a. Yeah. Ooh, here we go. Um, Rakano Stranger, which is the actual stranger we want for the colors that we currently have. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Yeah, and a frontline Cyclops would be like pickable here. Ambler Acolyte's good. Obsidian Golem's good. But... All right. Uh, Rakano Stranger. D- is Detain good enough as a trick? Burnout yeah. as Reach? I don't I don't know. I've never drafted a deck like this. I know. Neither have I. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Or if it, yeah, it, or if it can function. You know? Hmm. I, I again for 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 those keeping score, you you may be you know thinking like oh what the hell I didn't pick the Cyclops 
but there, there's there's a very key reason to this. Uh, Magma Javelin gets things out of the way. A torch pick nine. All right. Uh, what the hell? I feel very good about my my about fire. If the game is going to uh, subtly hint to me through the, the 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 roll of the dice that red is correct, you know, let's do the fire. Rebel Sharpshooter also works very well with tricks. As far as I'm concerned, red is always correct. Uh, as far as the faction <laughs> experiencing that they put into the <laughs> game, um, my second highest I think is ranked at like 24. And then my highest is ranked at 31. And that's red. <laughs> I, I like I play fire way more than literally everything else. For me, it's fire justice because I played Rakano for so long. Sam, it's fire justice right now, too. I barely play Rakano anymore, but that is straight up what it, it used to be. I could pick up that Yeti Snow Trucker. There's also a Strength of Many. Strength of Many is a pick. Uh, a, you know, Pump Spell, Crew Stranger is a bear. Uh, I don't know. Kind of like Snow Trucker, if this is what we're doing. If you're just going in on every color except for time. I'm, I'm kind of thinking right now our actual uh, color commitments are... Uh, Fire as, Justice, right? Fire Justice Primal, maybe. Yeah, it, the, the shadow is, at best, an incredibly minor splash and likely not even going to happen. Right. The reason, so. the reason I like Justice in here is because the clan hero is so very powerful. I agree. So, like, going in on on, on or sorry, sorry, uh, primal uh, in here, not justice. Uh, the re I like justice in here because I I like uh, justice has a lot of tricks to us and also has a couple strong cards to include Crown Watch Cavalry and Victor's Cry. Uh, I think I'm gonna pick the Snow Trucker then. Okay. Um, here we have Hip Shot, Praxis Stranger, Hip Shot, Rabble Rouser. Yeah, Hip Shot. Ugh. I know. We have two torches. We don't need hip shot, do we? Like, hip no. shot. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think you need hip shot when you have two torches in your deck. That's fair. I don't think you need hip shot when you have zero torches in your deck. If I'm going to be honest. Fair. Let's get some more strangers going. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a blink wolf. That's about it. Nothing else in here <laughs> really speaks to what we have going on. Oh man, you know, if hip shot was just a fast spell, it would be good. Because you could play it off the top of your deck as a fast spell, <coughs> you know? Yeah. I think here's a point where I can pick up a Strength of Many. That'll be yep. nice. Um, I can pick up another Hatchet. Yeah, I can pick up another Hatchet. I kind of like the idea of a Hatchet, like, where I, I get in and then are, am able to play the Hatchet. Uh, sparked. Mm -hmm. Um... If I have to pick something late, Roosting Owl's fine. Yeah, Roosting Owl is alright. Uh, we get some more Strangers, that's good. If uh, Roosting Owl was not a flyer, it would be unplayable, but it is, so. Yep. There's some more Disciplined Dominaras. I'll pick up a Smith Hammer. Audacious Bandit. Alright, so now we have Pack 4. Um... Taking Grenadin, Pyra Adepts, Alchemical I watched, Blast. I watched someone play five Stone Shakers in a deck once. Oh my goodness. It was pretty good. What the hell? Yeah. It was great. There's no real prompting to that. I just saw yeah. a Stone Shaker and I thought, thought I'd mentioned it. It was very fun. Yeah, no, that's oh. fair. Ticking Grenadin? Ticking Grenadin or Protect is a combat trick in a way. Yeah. It's a... Or even Cobalt Acolyte. Cobalt Acolyte. Yeah, sure, okay. Cobalt Acolyte. Um, Beast Colors Amulet. Yeah. Amulet. Uh, Ticking Grenadin. I mean, honestly, I think Ticking Grenadin is probably the weakest pick out of those. But... Yeah. Speaking of weakest pick. I feel like I'm short units on this approach. I agree. I, I feel like we don't have enough strangers yet. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. We need more strangers. So let's let's pick up this Feln Stranger here. Uh, I guess we'll have a ticking grenade in from this one. Another Cobalt Acolyte. 
Pyre Adept. I guess I've got Pyre Adepts. That's my my bear. Hey, an Oni Ronin in this late. Nice. Hey, not okay. Two. So here's the thing. This deck might do well purely because it's playing fire and includes one Oni Ronin and two torches. <laughs> It's basically all you need, right? Yeah, basically. All right. So, Oni Ronin, Pummels, Ticking Grenadin, Torches, Blink Dog, um, Ornate Katana, Fire Adepts, Granite Acolyte, Rebel Sharpshooter, Spark, uh, the Jawbone Hatchets, Audacious Bandit, Burnout, Magma Javelin, and then our Justice is going to be Strength of Any Crown Watch, Bright Mace, and Victor's Cry. Our primal is Yeti Snow Trucker, two Cobalt Acolytes, and then we have a Clan Hero to include, and then everything else is Strangers. Right. And then we have to make cuts from here. At the very least, you got to make cuts. Yes, and we're cutting to 15, by the way, if that wasn't apparent. Are you going straight 15 mana? Hell yeah. Uh, Dang, this, nice. this, curve, like that. this curve stops at four. Like, no, I, just, <laughs> I get it. It's just something that happens so rarely in uh, in draft. I can respect it, you know? Oh, Yeti Spy. That's... Cutting one of the two, either Primal or Justice, seems like the best way to make this deck more consistent. I agree. And uh, cutting the, the Primal is the way you do that, because the Justice is where you have a, cu a couple of your extra tricks, and Primal doesn't have any. Right. Primal has uh, some flying. Okay, let's let's do that. We'll cut out Primal... That means I'm going to have to include one additional card that I wasn't. Maybe that's like Smith's Hammer. Or, or yeah, I think maybe Smith's Hammer or the Spiked Buckler. But I think I'd prefer the Smith's Hammer or the Spiked Buckler, weirdly. Nah, Snow Trucker is the... the Snow Trucker and Clan Hero are the two reasons I wanted to be in Primal. Yeah, Snow Trucker, pretty dang good, actually. Um... It's weird to evaluate exactly why, but it, it does work. <laughs> uh, thank you, Earth Inspire, for keeping track of what the Xenon deck could have looked like. That's 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 excellent. We had four disciplined Amaneras as our life force uh, cards. Uh, Cult aspirant as well. The Xenon deck would have been a little bit lacking in life gain, in blood. Yeah, we have Oasis Seeker, Skeeter, Xenon Destroyer. Cup to 3 cup. Sabotage is incredibly fun. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, you don't get to play things. Get out. We have, how many Primal Strangers do we have? One, two, three, four Primal Strangers? Do you think you want to possibly play like a couple of the Primal cards anyway? Like just Clan Hero maybe? Clan here is the only one I would like include on that, just based on its its power on its own. I think I won't though. I think I'll include the. I'm gonna go with the hammer. Okay. All right, we're right. This is as as beat down as we can possibly be. This is this this deck does one thing: you play your creatures, you turn them sideways, and then you keep them alive with tricks. That's all it does. Yes, we are. Yeah. That's it. That's it, baby. That's all I'll do. All right, let's let's see how this does. This is this is a very silly attempt at a draft, and I'm I'm very happy with this cuz the games will be very quick. This makes for this this makes for an interesting uh take on it to see like how how, how well we we how Basically, th this this deck is a check. We we are inter instituting a check to the players playing in the draft right now. Um, do you have a good early game? Yeah. Do you? Do you have a play on turn two and turn three? If you don't, I'm very sorry. You're going to have some a, 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 a very bad day. Oh, thank you very much, Squirrel Token, for the bits. I appreciate it. That's pretty much exactly what this like. That's what this deck is asking. It's do you have yeah. an early game? And if the and answer is the yes, thing. like. And that's the thing, I a lot of draft decks I come across don't. So maybe that's the reason why this might do really well, you know? Well, I'm redrawn on this. We don't have any... Or somehow we don't have a play till three. Yeah, just, <laughs> what the hell? It's the exact opposite of what the deck does. Uh, what, uh, 
Uh, this doesn't have a play until four. four. What the hell? <laughs> Shit, are we the one being asked the question? No. No. Blood beetle, blood beetle, blood beetle. No. Oh, <laughs> we have something like eight. We have so many twos. Oh no, it's us. <laughs> we failed the us for better. Okay, we, we failed the check. <laughs> hell. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Okay. Populate you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm taking it. Hey, okay. okay. We're about to take tempo back. All right, so we attack for two. And we get to play out Audacious Bandit. And then Audacious Bandit gets hella strong. We Audacious Bandit might become, as time goes on, in a four. Yeah, with Pummel back up. <laughs> That's really big. That's the abyss. Yeah. Do do you have? Now we're asking our opponent. Do you have removal? <laughs> do you have a late game? Ooh. <laughs> oh my God! No. Quick draw. No, that's not real. How dare you do this to me? Quick draw. Overwhelm. The abyss is no longer valid. <laughs> There's no stopping the abyss. <laughs> oh no. What in the world are you doing? There's no this stopping it. I'll take the hit. There's no stopping the abyss. Uh -huh. They had they had the blood beetle. <laughs> um, I hate this. I attack for eight, and I guess I probably just play Jawbone Hatchet. Like, um. Or I, could, I, I suppose you could do that, or you could play the format of 2 2 and turn this into a 10 4. That takes it out of. No, it keeps it in uh, Lightning Strike range. With the, the, so it, it doesn't really change anything. I'm going to do it that way. Let's. <laughs> Hello! Swing! That's all this deck does. The Crunch! Oh, I love that sound. The crunch. <sighs> Fourth. Do they have a death strike? Yay, a yeah, death strike. Okay. You're at five. <laughs> um. All right, so I need to deal five damage. They finally got there. Yeah. Five damage. So, like, swinging in the <laughs> owns, I think. Yeah. Because you can play both that and the pummel um, if they do, like, a crazy triple block. Yep, okay, so we go ahead and we Victor's Cry our 2-2 our two -two to keep it alive. And we... Pummel the 3-1 to keep it alive? Yeah. Then you can see what... Oh, man, you get to see if uh, Victor's Cry is on the top of your deck. Yeah. Yeah, Don't stranger. Get that thing out of there. Um, does that matter? I'm putting that bottom. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. Sure. Why are you attacking, friend? Oh dear. Well, that's super inevitability right there, isn't it? Yeah. So we get to play our, our hatchet uh, powered. So I'll just take out the the wind shaper. I will. Hmm. Yeah, I'll take out the I... wind shaper because th that forces them to attack to break the yeah the weapon. Which means that you'd be able to kill it next turn. Uh, which means that they are like there's multiple different ways for why they could be dead right here. Yeah. Well, for one, three health with a ticking grenadin. Okay, they have to attack to break it. Makes sense. Have they got a play? Streetwise that... Informant. Oh, oh! Hi there! Never mind. Uh, that goes on my uh, tutu. Yes, because um, you'll attack in with both. They have to block the one for... They have to block the tutu. Hold on. Actually, might it be better? it might be better to put it on the one-one. Oh, just to... Because they have to block the one one. You'll get one more damage in my Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's better. Hi, Destiny. Yeah. 
And an Oni Roni. Yeah, you get one more damage in by doing this, because they have to block the buff thing. Yeah, I, I was thinking and... more in the way of, like, if they had some sort of trick, they could, like, kill the, you know, like, I don't know. They, anyway. They're the one who plays tricks, it's not them. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, yeah, what, what am I thinking? I'm, I'm thinking about my opponent, wow, my deck doesn't count as, ju as justice. You turn your guy sideways, that's all you do. <laughs> Why are you thinking about not turning him sideways? Yeah, I'm, like... I'm sitting there thinking. I'm like, oh, how do what? Like, what if my opponent? No, they don't have tricks because they, th I, I have all of them. I love this. There's, yeah, there's no justice here. <laughs> <laughs> we set all this justice on fire. That's all it does. <sighs> Just pack. Value are dead on. I love it. I, I love this because I don't feel like we have. We I don't feel like this is the the like perfect version or like the, the the best version of the deck like i feel like there's better things to do like or this deck could easily be a much more like better or forgiving oh well this hand would rule if that justice sigil were uh, uh if, if that justice sigil were a fire sigil i would keep it a heartbeat like look yeah. at this oh my goodness i wish huh. yeah rampages I would do a lot Okay. No, that's fine. Okay. It's all right. We have a curve. We're, again, we're asking our opponent, do you have a curve? Yeti Spy. No, okay. All right. Do they have a curve? If not, I'm going to get to play a weapon. It's okay, uh, opponent. You can just go ahead and ignore the two extra colors on here. We are literally just Ricano. Okay. We Okay. Ooh, a pummel. Um You don't have to put the hammer on it right now, do you? I don't I don't think I have to. I could, but I don't think it is that right? Like with the pummel? It would uh it would survive. You would get four damage in, um, you'd be able to put a, another sword on it next turn, turning into a five three, so a build your own clan hero. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I think this might actually be the best way to get damage in. Because that's important in this deck that you're playing, is that we have to consider actually doing enough damage to your opponent more than anything else. Yeah. I'm putting Pirate Adept on the bottom because I want to find a little bit more uh, realistic things. Oh, stun, sure. All right. Oh, well, I guess I get a Pirate Adept anyway, which I will play here. I like the Pirate Adept as a way to attack into this 3-3 pretty freely. Well, if I would have went for Granite Acolyte, it would have been the same outcome. Yep. Uh, you can attack in with the fourth, the four two. If you put a thing on it, then you'll be able to play the. Um, no, you wouldn't be able to play it this turn. Piss. I could just play the hatchet, kill off the two one, and attack for four. That is true, but is why I don't like Jawbone Hatchet. That that thing on its face is just so bad. I know. Especially since here comes Fire Star. No, okay. Lightning strike? Lightning strike. Alright. Ooh, Echo's quite poor here. It's specifically because they're not a time deck, so there's only really two cards that could be. <laughs> and they both yeah. scare the hell out of me right now. Yeah. Well, it could be a fate card. Um, so Yarn Hurler. Oh, it's oh! Fate form. Okay. It, that downgraded it. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Wait! Hold on, though. They were playing strangers. Yeah, but so are we. Oh, God. Nice. Come on. Maybe the... Strangers. I can't... Yes! <laughs> yes! 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 Nice! 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 Thanks for the reload, motherfucker. I can't believe that he spent a card out of... Our, our opponent, they spent a card out of their hand for nothing. Like, all right, here we go. Give me the card. Thank you. Oh, right, that's an opponent's effect. That's why that's waiting on me. Mm -hmm. uh, um... 
Yeah, like we discovered that one time where I my Aegis blocked it. Yeah. Goodness. Now, what do I want to do here? Uh, our attacks actually are not great. Um, I could, like... like... We could kill the 3-3. Three, three. You could just attack in and see what they block with. I kind of, like, kill the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, say so the flyer has a pay-5 to draw card, which is why I'm... Oh, I know. This this thing is very scary. That is a scary, scary thing to hit the board. You know, like, I'm thinking, like, torch the 3-3 three, three and then swing in for 6. Yeah, probably. The 3-3 three, three drew me a card. That's enough. That's all it needed to do. Yeah, they don't want to trade the 1-5 for the 6, right? I mean, they probably should, yeah. Yeah, they should! But but now we're even footing, and hopefully, like, we can... Blink dog. Blink dog. Oh no, we had another stranger on the top. Yeah, but that's... Whatever. I, I'm not gonna, like, play the delayed game for that. That's... That could be worse. I can't throw my board away to play you that. You can't, no. So I'm just gonna play uh, it. I'm just gonna play it. I don't want to wait on that. Oh hell! Okay. okay, that has to that has to eat my entire team. Yep. I can't. Cannot... Adapter Predator hitting the board is. I feel like it's one of the ways you just say, "Okay, I lose this game." I have to throw away my basically my entire board to eat that because I cannot allow it to live. Serpent Trainer, sure, and yeah, I don't think we're going to be coming out of this one alive. We fizzled. It happens. Yeah. The the trick there, our opponent had uh, plays on two, three, and multiple pieces of removal, yep. which is, is, you know... We what... asked the question, and they had it. Yeah. They had the answer. They answered. Yeah, Reckless Predator is, is this ridiculously powerful card. At the at the worst, very worst, it's it's like you you play it and it trades like two or three for one. Mm -hmm. uh, for what it's worth, I think you were asked earlier why Torch then attack. It was specifically to get them to block with the one five flyer as opposed to, um, you know, attack. You attack in, they have block with a three three. You wouldn't do any damage. Their one five flyer would exist again for another turn. Um, it, it was specifically to get more of the board removed from the game. Big blink dog! Big dog! Big dog. Big dog's not enough for big dog! I'm back, what's the makeup of this deck? Uh, 15 power and no cards that cost more than 4. If there is a beatdown in this world... We are it. Yeah. Oh, uh, good old, good old dog. But yeah, our opponent definitely was able to. Again, we we are here to ask the question, and you know, okay, good on them. Our opponent did find the answer. They they did it. Let's see if we can find two more people who can answer that question. I can't believe that game one with the most powerful bandit. That bandit was so big. Oh my goodness. Bandits. They they defeated the bandit in an understandable, reasonable way, but then that was just, it did too much damage to them. There was no coming back from going down to six life. Yeah. They they were stifled. Yep. Um. This okay. does not have any justice in it, but your hand doesn't have any justice in it either. I like this. Yeah. Ooh, Rebel Sharpshooter, eh? The world's best thing to pummel. Yeah, effectively. Yep, oh, alright. <laughs> Seeing a lot of those Huru strangers, aren't we? Yeah. Popular stranger. I, you know, I never really looked at the art on Huru Stranger. Huru Stranger is just fucking decking a dude. Mm-hmm.
I'm gonna let that happen because I have a replacement. Don't care about that 1-1. One, one. That's, that's just a clock. <laughs> uh, this is all very silly. Yeah. Strangers are here. That's all we got. Okay. I can pummel over that. There we go. Or you can... Well, you're going to pummel over it, but... If they don't block, you can hatchet it. There's a lot of things that you can do. Hatchet it seems good. Um... It looks like they were probably on a flyer's plan, but they wanted to be on a flyer's plan, but they're filled up their deck with, you know, mediocre cards flying. Right. And we have a lot of removal still left. Yep. Uh, Burnout can work for something big. Magma Javelin can work for something medium. Hey, there's there's uh, Justice. Nice. We, we need two for victors, but we don't even have the four for it, so, you know. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and play out a Rebel Sharpshooter. I want that down because that works very well with our Pummel. Yep. They have an instant. Hmm. I'm going to assume that I, that instant is that. Okay, never mind. Wow. Was. Oh, no. Oh, oh my God. No, they have <gasps> oh, my the God. Move. Oh, my God. The move. What? What is That's real? What happens. Get out of here with... I, I need to make much apple in that, right? Like... That needs to be removed immediately, yeah, because the, you don't want to let it give you a two-for-one. The move! Actually getting... Getting Icebreaker to work in draft is incredible. 120% respect. Anyway, I'm, I'm here to beat down with a bunch of T2s. Also, double just, justice. Yeah. Who needs uh, sigils? On top of that, you also have burnout for additional reach. You've got a lot of secret damage right here. Yeah. Twelve? <laughs> Twelve damage in the pocket is a good place to be. Uh, Life Link is the worst this could possibly dredge up. Killer. Hmm. Blink dog. They didn't use it. Uh. Uh. Is that all? Yeah, you have multiple different ways to kill him here. <laughs> oh, goodness. So that was our opponent who had some early game, but nothing to follow it up with. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think they they went into Who early because, yeah, no, Flyers planned really strong. I, I'm going to mm -hmm. get a lot of Flyers and it's going to win the game. But they picked up Flyers that were mediocre. They're, they weren't the good Flyers. I'm really amazed that here's a mulligan. Yep, this hand um, is poor. That's uh, we're up against the ogre battle cruiser. Um, I'm very we can eventually sad. Eventually, play this money running. But... I know. Eventually is a really sad place to be on an oni ronin, though. Yeah, turn one oni ronin is. Am ridiculous. I too? Am I too high on justice sigil with six? Oh, mm, no, okay. That's just that's just the world. It is the world that is wrong, not me. <laughs> I was heavily considering whether or not maybe Oni Run in there would have been a better play, but... I want the double uh, red for my... Hatchets, yeah. Yeah. Which I actually don't think I'm playing right now. I think I'm playing some more... Yeah, you're playing more two-power things. I could hatchet that out if I wanted to, but... Let's just get, like, some two-power things going. Mm-hmm. Die with honor. That's the soundbite I've heard more than any other soundbite in the game. Oh, I'm trying to think my favorite soundbite. It might be... Yeah! I didn't say it was my favorite. I, I said it was yeah, the yeah, most yeah. heard. Right. Th I know. Those are two different things. Agreed. Um. They're stuck on three. Yeah, I'm just playing the hatchet then. Yep. Let's get damage going. Uh... I think my most heard, I'm trying to think, it might be uh, 
either Oni Ronin or Valkyrie Enforcer. Because Valkyrie Enforcer is on the other side of the table so often. Yeah. It's one of my favorite. I actually don't think I can decide on one. All right. Well, our opponent, uh, I'm very sad for our Ogre Battlecruiser friend, but they they, they did not pass the check. Oh, yeah, no. Mokto is run, coward! Run, coward! Uh, or, yeah, um, Clan Heroes, at last, a <laughs> worthy foe! is pretty good. Yeah. There's a pretty, there's a good number of good callouts in this game. It's like callouts are the equivalent of flavor text in it, right? Yeah. Uh, do you remember uh, Throne Warden's, like, really off, put it, like, off centered call out from when it first came out? Thank you for the bits I don't. Again. So, so, uh, it had the same call out, but it was like somebody audio, like, didn't run it through a, a filter to get rid of the, like, white noise in the background. And it sounded dreadful. I, I don't remember that. I definitely played it while it was like that, but. How do you feel on this? Uh, you know, I, my first instinct is to say I don't like it, but I think it's probably still fine. Right, like this could be a mulligan, but. I like Curve. I don't like Blink Dog, but I like Curve. You cannot put out the light. God, that one I hear all the time. Because yeah, it's usually, you cannot put out, you cannot put, you cannot put out the light. You know? Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. <laughs> that's, that's that call out in a nutshell. We forge what we need. I care more about the board presence than the pummel this turn. Yeah, fair. Uh, I mean, all the stranger call outs are pretty good. I think. Sweet. Especially okay. when you play a lot of them in one turn kind of thing, because they, they lean into each other. That's kind of the best part with the stranger callouts. Yep. Um, I have a feeling that a, this, a pummel this turn might be able to keep like your entire board here. Yeah, and I have a blink dog to play as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I want a pirate up right now. Pirate up is probably the worst card in your deck. Yeah. Like, I can play Rebel Sharpshooter, and then, like, if I find a, a Justice, we can make it a 5-5. Five five. Mm -hmm. My opponent thinks they're the aggressor here? Do they want a spark? They might just want a spark. No, they... They th attacked him with a 1-1. One, one. Uh, they might have a torch? No. no. What the hell? What are they doing? Oh, they, no they, missed a, they missed a power drop. No, they have, a, yeah, no. they have an instant. Is it a draw to you? Wow! All right. Ho, 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 ho. I'm very sorry, my friend. That's uh, that's gonna be poor. Groundbreaker. Thanks. Sweet. Um, do you put the Crown Watch Cavalry on that stranger, or do you burn that out with uh the Grenadine drone? I kind of like pump on the stranger and attack with the three three and the four four. The burnout. Okay. The burnout's eight points of damage to my opponent's head. You know. Yeah, that's smart. Um, this will probably trade, maybe, because they don't want to give you flying, especially when your stranger is now bigger than theirs. Yeah, I expect to trade with the three three. That's what I would expect too. Yeah. And this. Leaves and they are on the defense now, oh, like one hundred ten percent. Well, I have eight points of reach. You can't yep. attack here. There's no way, my friend. You can't even play the the torch on the same turn that that dies. So you have very little like ability to kill things with it. I'm all outing and see if they die. Uh, that's five plus. Yeah, no, they're no. Yeah, that that's it. They're dead. Sacrifice a unit to deal some damage to my opponent. Here, this is why I like burnout. Hell yeah. You know, Burnout's a good card. I like it a lot. I play it in Mono Fire. Burnout doesn't have the respect it deserves. It's a little... It, it's costly, but, like, five damage to the opponent's face is powerful. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot of reach for, for its cost. I mean, there's no reason why this deck shouldn't work. It's... It's an aggressive deck. 
it has the way it loses and the way it wins, you know? So, yeah, there, there's, there's, there's a beauty to the simplicity, you know? Yeah. It, 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 this is a deck that knows what it is doing. I don't think this deck does it perfectly. I think it has a, it doesn't have like the best, like mix of tricks that I'd like in it. Uh, I wish I had like a rampage or like a, a, a one or two more tricks to be able to, to win combats. Yeah. But what it does, you know, it, <laughs> I'm very glad. I, I'm very glad to give you a, a, a single power, Kaz. <laughs> that makes it so you're playing. It's 16 power now, and that makes it illegal. Right. There was another draft that came before this. This is draft two. Um, ooh. 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 I like it. I like this a lot. Now this is a starting hand. I like this a lot. I mean, you can't play the Magma Javelin for a while. That's fine. But you've got a hell of a strong start regardless. Katana? Yeah, I think Katana here is actually your best choice. You've got Torch back up for it. Oh, sweet. Immediate pressure. Nice. <coughs> yeah, and yeah. Also consider putting that number on it to... No, don't do it now. Well, I could, maybe? I could torch that out of the way and then play the hammer if I wanted. You know... It's five damage. It's... Hmm. And then you can also Magma Javelin away their next play. Right. That'd be putting a hell of a lot of damage on them with just this taking granted in. And if they don't make a play next turn, oh boy. Another blink dog. Now, Torch is the scariest thing that they could play. They do not have it. Okay. Yeah, they're at nine right now. <laughs> Beep boop. Naked Sparkbot is very unfortunate. I'm so sorry, my dude. I think I'm attacking into that. Oh yeah, no question. You have a lot of plays to follow it up with. Really wish I had a trick to follow it up, but we do not. Okay, put our opponent to eight. Sweet. They're playing a spark deck that drew none of their ways. Well, that we killed everything that they were triggering spark. Wait. Yep. <sighs> okay, but they, if we draw poorly from here on out, we could absolutely fizzle. They had a second sight. That's a main phase. But they were looking for something to play. They didn't get it. Kill them. Pummel! Yeah, I can go on top. Pummel! Destroy! <laughs> you ran them out of creatures! Yeah, we just answered every threat they played. Nice. Like, the second sight there was, was like, a panic, you know? That's like, oh! You know, we just don't... I need something to put in front of that pyro death right this second. <laughs> yeah. Well, that ruled. Again, I love it. This is... <laughs> it, it's, like I said, beautiful in its simplicity. Mm-hmm. It knows exactly what it does, and that just swings in. There's a there's an adage uh, that I, I like from back in the day where... I guess uh, Day 9 still does, or currently does, the StarCraft dailies now because of StarCraft coming out. Uh, he's been doing like, learning StarCraft Brood War and things like that, but there was an adage that he used all the time back when he did a lot of StarCraft II in the, like, years, I guess years and years ago at this point, and, and that was just go fucking kill him. Like, yeah. in, in the sense that there were a lot of times where he'd get these replays of people uh, playing very cautiously, very, like, oh, I have to keep building up these resources, and I need to make sure that I can crush my opponent with this inevitable... Just go fucking kill him. 
Like, just, just, uh, just do it. Yeah. And, like, it's something that I talk about pretty often when playing this game, is that the thing that will destroy you more than anything else is not attacking in. Mm-hmm. Not sw the curse of cowardice is what will make you lose games more than anything else if you do not swing it. And like, this deck d can't do that. It can literally never do that. If you don't swing in with your guys almost every turn, you're going to be the one losing. Like, mm -hmm. they, it, you understand that just from looking at it. The camel. The camel. Strong play. Blood. All right, camel. so they are. Yeah, they're. Um, Xenolysian, uh, Primal Xen... I don't remember what that three-color combo is yeah. frequently called. Esper um, in, in, in the magic parlance. Yeah. yeah, although... I've always felt that time was slightly more analogous to green in magic. Mm. Hey, cool, 4-4 uh, four, four hatchet. Yeah, if I can play it, I don't have three power. <laughs> well, I mean, you're gonna be able to get... Oh, that's right, never mind. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So so what I specifically mean when I, what what is meant by the just go fucking kill them part of that is like is what you said about cowardice. You need to be able be able to know when the right moment to just go and crush your opponent is. You know. Yeah. Okay, um... And to be fair, that doesn't just mean, um... You know, aggressive decks that swing at every turn, but also re recognizing when you have lethal on board. Because, like, that, you need to know that mm -hmm. to win games. So here I am asking my opponent to trade their 4-drop for my 2. Okay. Our opponent has an incredibly well put together life force deck. Yeah, I mean that's real rare. I don't see life force actually come together that well a lot of the time. I feel like camel is one of the most rock solid ways to keep that blood flow going. Yeah, well, like even there with camel, and then you put in, you know, it's written right here. Uh... Okay. Um... I mean, supple scribe is a good card, just flat. You no, know? this guy can go in most time decks trying to figure out when the right moment to move in is here because like attack now yeah as we said the, the, you know the, the the like ah just go get you know go fucking kill him like ah get in but that that's actually pretty wrong here we lose almost every resource we have yeah there's um a play i can think of which might kill the discipline that Monera for <sighs> two of your cards but that's a it feels bad to do that because yeah. you're gonna be losing sorry not just two of your cards it's for three of your yeah it's a three for one yeah. And, and we lose, we actually lose the ability to do that after this turn here. Mm. You have a similar three for one in the form of just blocking, you know? Yeah. Okay, that's a card I can remove. Uh oh, is it an initiation? No, they've got the move! Wait a minute. Oh god, that's horrible! I can't kill yeah, that. Uh, you can't. Uh, I feel like snapping Brush Docker with Zen initiation is almost unbeatable. Oh, they had it. Okay, um. They have some really obvious block. <laughs> Usually when I see Brush Docker come down, it is almost always followed by initiation these days. I think people have wised mm -hmm. up to this being a very strong combo. I think I just blow him out for seven. Yeah. Except my losses, and I'm only winning this game by theft. So. Yep, you you're gonna have to be drawing like torch. Torch is running, maybe. Yeah, the problem is I'm not gonna have any units. Mm hmm. And I mean that destiny coming back actually will not do it either because well, unless they I, swing I you with I everything. Have, no, I won't have a unit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. At Larry, this would it would draw you another card.
Yeah, so torches running won't do it either. You're you're dead on next swing. There's no way to win this at this point. Yeah. Staff's that was good. a good boy. <laughs> good, I tell ya. So yeah, there there is a a, a bit of uh, you know, it's it's hard to get the the initiation combo on the the snaps because if the, your opponent has an instant to respond to the initiation, whew, you know it's it's over. Mm -hmm. But you know if if they don't, oh god again. It's another slow. St <sighs> oh. It's a good start, with the exception of Oni Ronin just not coming down until turn three. I'm gonna keep it. Yeah. This is what I get for going to six justice sigils. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Our oh, are you us but better? Yeah. Uh oh. Are you us but with one drops instead of two drops? That could be. Uh oh. Oh boy, it looks like it is. Well, we can use Bright Mace Paladin to actually make that fine. You yeah, know? you have a multiple different ways to get uh, Bright Mace Paladin's damage online. Uh-huh. They have tricks, too. There's a, there's a delay there. They're holding a Finest Hour or, or some sorts. With regard to... All right. The very least... You'll be able to ornate katana and hold up the pommel as an extra trick if they don't remove this right now. Yeah. Oh, they don't have a sigil. Okay, you've got multiple tricks now. Excellent. Okay. I think I just run it in and see what happens then. Yeah, cause that, because they don't well, know that the uh, lifelink is online well, right now. I could wait one turn. I could play Blink Wolf off the top and Oni Ronin, and then Strength of Many gets a lot better. That's true. You know, I think that's fine. We're not under an enormous amount of pressure, especially since they didn't get anything to play on three there. Yeah, we take a slight delay, but I think they have either a strength of many or a... Or, or, I think they have a plus three, plus three. Yeah. Okay. Static bolt on the Oni Ronin means that it's not going anywhere else. That's fine. I think now we can come in with Bright Mace. Yeah. Okay. Understandable. Ignite. Now let's pretend to make it look like actually no, we didn't have a trick. We were just bluffing. Ooh, I would love that two, three to come in now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start simplifying this board a bit. And if they want to spend tricks, that's fine. But I want a simplified board state at this point. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that means that pretty much everything that we could possibly play here is good. Uh, Strength of Many is right now a finest hour. Pummel is plus two, plus two. Mm -hmm. We can play both of them, so that's a collective plus five, plus five. So basically build our BYO uh, Victor's Cry. Yes. Here it comes. So I'm going to Strength of Many. Actually, right. I think we Pummel first, because that beats what they have here. Okay. So they have a response. It's going to be their finest hour. What if it's bring down? Ooh! It was flash freeze. Does that actually remove it from combat? Yeah, that stuns it, so it's no longer attacking. Uh, that can go top, thank you. And then we're Fair. we're out of combat, so... Okay, that's that's good. I'm actually glad to see that. As far as um, tricks that they could play, that is the least scary. Spring wind, sure. They still have a trick. Right, I'm going to torch the treasury guard. Sure. Giant growth? Strength of many, okay. Okay, well... I just had a flashback to uh, the science that was done because the strength of many uh, having the special I know the orbs. Yeah, special orbs. Just 
feel very good about our position right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit worried about what that whispering wind is going to actually kick up. I know, I know. I want to, I want to kill it with our hatchet if possible. Right, understandable. Also, our life total is a bit low. It's going to be fixed by the bright man's paladin with the ornate katana. Yeah, like we, we, yeah, we have the fix for that, so that's fine. Unless they burst you down right now, which technically is possible in justice. Two cards, nine points. Off of two cards, nine points extra. I don't think so. Um, Victor's Cry costs four, followed by a... That would be eight. Points. Yeah. Never mind. They, They're just one off if they could posspossibly do it. And they're considering, like, are they the aggressor? Are they the defender? What's going oh, on here? I don't think Whispering Wind is a May. No, it is a May. It is. You can, you can just target the... Uh, so Whispering Wind allows you to discard a card to draw a higher cost card. They might hold it doesn't back. say it, but it is a random higher cost card. Yeah. God, they are like. <coughs> you know, I understand. This is a hard attack or a block to do because they are they do have you low, but also your crackback will be like <laughs> legend. That is not. Why are you doing the mentor? Why did you do that, friend? How strange. Um, everything on your board can kill or, like, trade here. Would you ornate katana on the thing? That'd probably what? be fine. Hmm. Ornate katana and just swing all out? Yeah, see what you draw off of the ornate katana. <laughs> yes, absolutely swing all out. Holy, Holy shit. Holy shit. Could that be a better draw? I don't think so. No. that There is no better draw than that, I think, right now, because they are at, you know, zero mana. Uh, I don't want that right now. I'd actually like a fourth power. Anyway, let me just gain seven, and now all of a sudden I'm the one in control. Our life totals flipped. Congratulations. And they have to do this to be able to, like, yeah, they're just going to cycle Justice Sigils, because they don't need that. They want real cards. Sure. What, what do you think that they that's what they got off of the Justice Sigil? Oh, definitely. Um, they Unless they have a trick here, there's nothing else that they can do. You, like, swinging in is incredibly free. Yeah, I think I'm going to swing in, allow them the chump blocks, and then play our hatchet. Yeah. Ooh, they have a plus three, plus three again? Oh! They got the cry. They okay. had the cry. Victor was here. The reason I did it this way, and the reason I, I still defend doing it this way, was because... Let's me kill off this card. Yep. And I feel like that's a big threat. I want them to be able to draw dead. You know? And I feel like they may have drawn dead. No, they... No, that, that's... It's basically dead. Yeah, that's something. Um... Because you're gonna kill that, you're gonna... Put the hammer on it, you and, know, like, deal extra damage. Hammer in. They're dead next turn if they don't have a creature to play. Okay. And we just Magma Javelin in the face. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That's 6 1. That is 6 1. Or 6 2? 6 2? I thought it was only six, 1. 6 2. Though. 6 2. Okay. God. Oh. Yeah, somebody mentioned earlier, instead of going for the torch, trying to get it in combat, the only reason I didn't like trying to catch it in combat is because it's a very transparent trick. Because I'm just attacking with a bunch of tutus, I have to pull the trigger first. Right. And I don't... Sometimes really... playing the torch before combat changes the way that your opponent will actually do things. Yeah. I, I definitely and... understand the, the, the want to, like, try to catch them in combat, and if I had a three-power unit that could have actually threatened the the guard, that would have been a lot better, but like as is, I, I think it's a 50-50. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we lost once to Huru, and then we lost to Life Force. That's right. That Life Force deck went off incredibly hard. Yes. Alright, so this is the last game, no matter what happens. Yep. Billy, no! Billy, no! Good name. Uh, good hands? Almost? There's two. You need two more power to make this really work. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking about mulliganing it based on that. I don't like... Yeah, that might be fair. I, I, I really like the hand, but it's just not... Like, we only have two cards that are playable. 
Um, mm-hmm. That said, like we are the one on the play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the redraw. Okay. It's okay. It's, it's not fine. great. I don't like four power. That's that's quite yeah. bad. Four power there is not great. Five power there is even worse. That's fine. Yeah, every power we draw past four is 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 a dead power. Okay, they've missed a play though, and if they yep. mi- if they miss a three, I get to f- magma javelin them in the face. Hmm. What? Emerald acolyte, huh? That's genuinely a bit strange. That is not a card anyone plays. Uh, do you have some kind of weird armor plan in Argentport? Yeah, like I couldn't break it. They they do have one point of armor now. You look lost. Do you javelin that out of the way, or you? Um, uh, you're, you're... I'm I'm gonna post javelin it if they get like. You're fine with the trade here. Yeah. Okay, then we just javelin it post. Yeah, I have a feeling they've got a way to get something out of the way. Um, I'm, I'm going to imagine they they have slate. Is the idea? Yeah. You're in the crowd, watch now. <laughs> All right. I think here I'm gonna plus two plus two my stranger and attack with both. Yeah, fair. Ride to victory. Wonder if there's a deck that Crown Watch Press Gang is particularly good in. I don't know. The body seems too small. Yeah, for and like it, the cost is too high for a deck that's revolving around one at cost things. Yeah. Sure. Also sure. Not playing that as a. Uh... A way to get in. Okay. Something's dying. Yeah, like, do I... Cr- I think I crack in with both. They Are they going to block the 4-4 four, four on the 2-2? Two, two? Because I feel like that would just be a wrong decision. Ooh. Okay. Is that it? Is that all they're doing? Yeah, um, now the question is, do I pump and put him to five, or do I save my 2-2? I think we pump and put him to five. Yeah, I kind of like that. We've got a lot of ways to do, like, I mean, burnout is just lethal then, right? Yeah. And if you get, you know, Victor's Cry on top of the deck, that's another super huge threat. Yikes, okay. That's unfortunate. That's actually pretty bad. I don't think you can aggress here, though. That's, That's an interesting attack. Okay, back to seven. Are you actually getting... You're doing that. You're doing that. Well, you're... It's not hurting you that bad. They're not getting hurt by it that bad, but I still feel like that was... You know, in the grand scheme of plays, wrong. I just leave everything back. Now, do I crash and put him on five? Again, I feel like you do because you have a a draw. You know, a draw here that is, it's, they're just dead. Uh, yeah. Yep. Obvious. I also like Sharpshooter being my unit here, because it makes my combat tricks. Like, sooner or later, I will Destiny into my plus five, plus five. Yep. That sucks. That sucks. That bl- sucks a lot, yeah. That puts them, like, way up on on uh, on life. Like, they're back yeah, they're on gonna... six. Going out, kill the... Would you... hmm. hmm. Maybe they shouldn't swing with it. <laughs> oh, to three? Putting yourself in torch range. Okay. All right, so now there's three draws that are lethal on them right this second. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. There's 
Victor's Cry on them, so that means they're going to have to block with the 2-4. Ornate Katana, okay. That lets you draw more into possible... I think I attack, and then, like, Blink Dog. Yeah. I mean, that's a 5-3 now. A 5-2 now. 4-2 now, 4-2, yeah, 4-2. Um, so, it's actually kind of a threat. Yeah, lethal if it connects. 10 in the air. You got it, bud. 6 on the ground as well to make it lethal and forcing you to block. Yep. So, now I need to draw... Uh... Torch, Burnout, or Torch. Yep, so I've got 3 draws in 26. Not the greatest of odds. Not the greatest of odds. Not horrible odds, though. Yeah. Um, Hammer... No, hammer... they've got enough... Uh, hammer would put them to one. Yeah, yeah. Hammer, hammer would put them to one. So it's got to be now. We just have to see... Nope. Like, this removes the Valkyrie, so, like, you know... Which the... does mean that you can survive if they don't get one back. Yeah. Well, no, we're on no, six. No, 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 we're on six. The, the, the big trick there is that if uh, if Pummel was something that allowed me to defensively trade, I might have been able to lifelink myself to, to not die here, but... Mm -hmm. Instead, we are going to fall. Six and three! All right. Six and three. Yeah, no, this plan works. Jeez. Anyway, I, I think I, I I I'm glad that we talked about and then showed off the plan. Combat tricks are good in this game. It turns out. Yeah. I think like just any sort of instant speed interaction. We so we get almost all of our gold back, almost everything. We're, we're down like four three hundred, and we get some packs to open to finish off the night. Mm -hmm. All in all, very good. And let's see if we get anything of any merit in these. <laughs> Thank you very much for the bit, Squirrel Token. It's, this is a very fun one. Champion of Cunning. Is that a... I think that might be a... Not a duplicate Champion of Cunning. Yeah, that wasn't a duplicate. At this point, um... I have to take a look at my profile. How close am I to finishing off, uh... Empty throne rares, ninety four percent. Okay, close. All Was right, full play set, ninety four percent. Ninety four percent full play set. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have uh, destroyed so many when I was making that Rakano deck at, at the start of the game. Yeah, I did that just to uh, kind of rush myself towards having an, a functional one. No, it's understandable. So yeah, yeah as far as uh, rares going, that's five percent of full play set on empty throne. Mm, okay. Still working there. So yeah, small creatures plus I think the instant speed interaction is uh it's just strong in this game is, is, that, like is, to be able to do it key. at all. Yeah. And if you want to if you want to have a good time, if you want to have quick games, if you like creature there's there's three parts that make this deck function. Early game creatures, anything, just bodies on the ground, doesn't matter. Yep. Trick tricks, ways to make those bodies on the ground translate one for, or one into your opponent's creatures, or translate to damage. And speaking of damage, the third piece is uh, reach. Uh, the The ability to kill your opponent from a high life total is quite meaningful in this deck. In case you do run out of speed, or even to speed along a normal game. So, burnout, for instance, was very good at that. Having multiple torches is very good because torch plays both roles. You know. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, thank you very much, Doc, for uh, joining on this. Um, yeah, sure. No problem. <clears throat> yeah, very glad to have a, a co-pilot along with this, and we had a lot of fun with it. And I haven't been on for a fair while, so yeah. I figured I probably should show up every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody uh, in the zoo for, for joining. I hope you had a lot of fun with... Uh, I hope you had a lot of fun watching this. I hope you got some... I hope there was something that you learned. Maybe something that you didn't know, either in, in the first or second draft. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, I do cards regularly on Wednesdays, but 
throughout the week and on weekends as well uh, when when the fancy strikes me. Um, so if you want to follow and catch that or any of the other things that I do, you can. Uh, if you want to support the channel more, you can always subscribe and get access to a cool skull, skull emote, uh, as well as it being half-off sub month for new subs. I think that's still going for another couple of week or week or so. So, And if you want to catch a doc here, All right, uh, yeah. you can uh, catch him over at uh, M underscore D underscore C underscore T. Yeah, it's uh, I, this was literally the only combination of these letters that I could get to, tw uh, you know, Twitch to recognize. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thank you all for joining me, everybody, and have a good night. Yeah, have a good one.